from the beautiful sun-kissed island of Kauai, it's Animal Talking. Tonight, join Gary and his guests, Duncan Jones, Paul Shear, and musical guest, the Dapper Rapper. And now, because Jeff Keeley sucks, here's your host, Gary Witta. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you all for joining us. My goodness, so glad to be with you all again. Let me just turn on the jukebox here, make sure you can hear a little of that KK jazz. Adam Nickerson, psychic, band leader, confidant. How are you, sir? I'm doing all right. How are you doing tonight? I'm, I'm doing pretty good. What are you? Let's get straight into the fashion choices. What are you wearing tonight? Uh, I just tried to go with a low-key, standard uh, Adam-ish outfit. You okay. Know I, you know, you and, know, I uh, like I like that you've that you've dressed that you haven't like try, tried to draw too much attention to you. It's a thing I've been noticing with you, trying to draw attention to yourself. I get it. I'm the uh -huh. host. You know, I'm Batman. You're Robin. But you know, I'm I'm Mario. You're Luigi. Sometimes you want to be Mario. I get it. I get it. But I, I'm glad yeah, that you. I'll just try and keep it quiet. Yeah, it's it's good. It's good. Stay, stay, yeah, keep keep with that theme through the show. I think I think everyone will will appreciate that. We'll see. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> you will notice that in our countdown screen and in our little uh, corner up in the uh, logo up in the corner there, um, we have a new thing that says subscribe. Go to youtube.com slash gwitter. And that's because we want you to do exactly that. You can watch the show here live, but over on the YouTube channel, we are doing some, uh, we are doing some wonderful things. Uh, we have all the, we have full episodes. We have clips. We have highlights. We have our theme music. Uh, Adam did these wonderful thumbnails that make the, the you know, we, I actually spoke to someone at YouTube that taught me all about engagement. She said, you got to have better thumbnails, you got to do this, you got to do that. We've been doing all kinds of things to make the YouTube channel uh, pop off a little bit better. And so uh, do head over. Don't forget to like and subscribe, hit that bell, do all those things that I've listened to YouTubers uh, tell me all my life. Go to youtube.com <laughs> slash gwitter, like and subscribe, hit that bell so you get notified when new videos uh, go live. Uh, uh, you will, you will, uh, you'll be thanking me uh, in the morning, I'm sure, because we've got some good content over there. Um, I do want to. I, I listen, Adam. You know I love Snowbike Mike. You know I love him. I'm oh, a number definitely. one fan. Number one yeah. fan. I'm actually going to be co-hosting uh, an Xbox podcast with Snowbike Mike coming up this summer, uh, timed to uh, mm -hmm. coincide with the upcoming launch of the Xbox Series X, and I'm very excited about that. And of course, when it was time to find a hype man to do the announce to be the announcer to be my hank kingsley uh, so to speak yeah. there was only one name on my, on my list and that was of course uh mike snowbike mike and he's been doing an incredible job with these intros he's been crushing it but i gotta call him out this week because <laughs> you know he usually sends us as you know five or six takes and we, we 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 pick the one that we like the best and he always kills it uh but this week he did something a little bit sneaky adam he did something a little oh. bit sneaky i'm gonna i'm just gonna i'm just gonna so you know I have this this feud with Jeff Keighley. It's a very bitter feud. I take it very seriously. It's a war at this stage. It's a war. And, you know, yeah. it's a zero-sum game. There can only be one uh, winner. And, uh, you know, as you saw, I, I had I wanted to get Mike on my side. You know, Jeff Keighley sucks. That was part of the intro. Very excited that he that he uh, did that intro for us. <laughs> but he's, he, 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 he slipped in a take that I think he was hoping would slip through the net. And I'm going to kill the jukebox for you right now. I'm going to play you for, I'm going to play the whole thing. It's 24 seconds. Just listen to what Mike tried to slip through the net here. Just listen to this. Live from the beautiful sun-kissed island of Kauai, it's Animal Talking. Tonight, join Gary and his guests, Duncan Jones, Paul Shear, and musical guest, the Dapper Rapper. And now, because Jeff Keeley sucks, Jeff, my name is Snowbike Mike. I'm available for the Game Awards. Here's your host, Gary Winna. All right, so we got to talk about this, Adam. <laughs> you got to pick a like, in a war. You you can't stand on the you can't stand on the fence. You got to pick a side. <laughs> and right now, I don't know what side my my good buddy, my friend Snowbike Mike, is on. Is he is he on Team Gary or is he on, is he on Team Keeley? But I like, I got to have a Mike. conversation with him. I, th I think he's on. Yeah, he's on Team Snowbike Mike. He's on Team Lookout for Number One. He's trying to he's he's trying to have his cake and eat it, but let me tell you, it ain't gonna happen. It's not gonna happen that way. I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have a talk. I said, look, Mike, you got you know, if you want to go do the game awards, that's fine. Go do it. But like, you ain't announcing on this show anymore. I'm not sharing it with Jeff Keeley. What are you kidding me? I'm gonna have this, the stench of Jeff Jeff Keeley on this show. <laughs> the stench. No, we're not having that. We're not having that. I'm not, I'm not happy about that at all. Um, I want to get straight to our first guest uh, because he has very limited time. But there's one real quick thing I want to do. Before that happens, I had a wonderful chat. I had a wonderful chat uh, last week uh, with my good friend Reggie. 
And I don't even need to say his other name. You know, you know, when I just say Reggie, everybody knows who I mean, right? Reggie. The legendary Reggie. I had a wonderful conversation with him this week. What a, what a, lo what a lovely man uh, he is. Former president of Nintendo of America. Super, super nice guy. We are working on, on getting him on the show. It might take a little while because he's so, so busy with his schedule. Uh, obviously, we've got a lot going on here as well. If we can make it work out, we will, right? But right now, I think we can officially count Reggie as a friend of the show. That's I'm, I'm very proud to say that. Uh, whether or not we wow. can get him on anytime soon, who knows? But he's a friend of the show. And as a friend of the show, uh, I, wanted to, I wanted to help uh, him with some of his endeavors. As you know, he's inv very much involved uh, with uh, some charitable philanthropic work, the New York Video Games Critics Circle. He's just started a new podcast and he's raising money through a GoFundMe uh, to, uh, to, to support it. And all that money is going to charity. And, uh, I would, I, and I wanted, I just wanted to give, give, give his podcast a little shout out. So if you'll bear with me for one minute and 19 seconds, uh, I want to, I want to bring, make you aware of some of the amazing work, uh, that Reggie is, uh, is doing out there in the world. So I'm going to go over here real quick to, uh, monitor two, and I'm going to ask you to watch this little video. Hello, this is Reggie. I hope you're doing as well as possible and staying safe during these difficult times. I also want you to know that I'm joining forces with Harold Goldberg for a series of fundraising podcasts for the New York Video Game Critics Circle, a nonprofit organization. I believe in the cause, so much so that I'm part of the organization's board of directors. This series of seven podcasts is going to be exciting, fun, and informative. We'll have some very special guests as well. Here's Harold with more. Thanks so much, Reggie. It's going to be a great podcast series. We're asking for donations for two reasons. We're bringing our games journalism and narrative writing courses to homeless students in New York City. Homeless students comprise an underserved community that's really having a difficult time right now. So we want to help. In addition, we'll be taking our journalism courses online for everyone to use for free. I hope you'll donate now and join us for this very special podcast series with Reggie. So I think that's wonderful what Reggie's doing. I think that's a really, really good um, uh, thing, worth, you know, very much worthy of our support. And so now that I've exposed you to that little video, I'm also going to drop into the chat uh, the link to the GoFundMe where you can go uh, and support that uh, wonderful effort to raise money um, for a very uh, worthy charity. So I'm very excited about that and I wish I wish Reggie and uh, Harold uh, the best of luck with it. Now, it is time. It is time to get to our first guest. Adam, if you'd be so kind as to uh, allow me transit through to my desk. Thank you very much. Oh, I appreciate it. you can't that. get through the other way? Well, maybe I can, but I wanted to go this way. Adam, you don't have to make a big deal out of it. Thank you. I, I wasn't making a big deal out of it. <laughs> I'd like to, I'd like to uh, at this point, bring on our first guest. I'm very excited to have him on the show. He's a good friend of mine. He's a very, very talented uh, writer-director. He, has, of course, has made uh, movies like Moon, which really put him on the map, uh, Source Code, uh, the movie Mute, which is playing right now on Netflix, and, of course, the Warcraft movie, the big blockbuster Warcraft movie. He has a new project uh, uh, that I'm very excited to talk to him about. Please welcome to the stage my good friend, Duncan Jones. <laughs> There you go. Good. Oh, I got a little bit lost. Hold on a sec. Here I come. Is that the bathroom? I'm sorry. Wait. I think there's a click. Oh, here I am. Hey! Providing we just sound effects and everything. I love it. Can love we it. just can we just say thank you to the band? Because I mean what a what a sound what a what a, what a... where'd you go um, reggie he you, he makes you call him reggie i mean i think i think that's just what everyone calls him it's like he's like no, everyone's uncle. No, no you see it's kind of like a venn diagram there's there's people who call him reggie there's people who call him reg who know him really well oh. and then there's then there's er okay well i i guess i'm on the i guess i'm on the i'm on the outer <laughs> circle i'm not as cool as i thought i was uh duncan i don't know if you're monitoring the stream but we tried very hard to kind of um replicate your uh, your little man-made moon uh, uh, Twitter avatar. I don't know if you're Thank able to you. see it, but like, how how do you how do you feel about it? Did we do a good job? I think it's good. I like the fact that you got my inebriated red nose. Yes, 
It's like kind of cute little snowman carrot nose. I like that. It's very cute. Yeah, it, it looks like <laughs> I've been lying in a gutter for a couple of days and uh, have been drinking Mad Dog 2020. Duncan, um, I'm particularly glad to have British you. Boots. I'm particularly glad to have you on the on the show tonight because we had you on once before and you you had a problem with your audio and we had to kind of you know, abort abort and, and eject you out of the airlock uh, because it, the it, audio was just not working. <laughs> But we have since solved those technical problems and you are back and you are clear as a bell. And so I, I now I finally get to say to you and hear you back. Duncan Jones, thank you for joining us on the show. Hey, thank you, sir. I can't believe your show is looking wonderful. And I love the uh, I love all the backstage stuff that you've got going on. Blue M&Ms oh. and everything. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, you I mean, you sat across your rider. You know, we do we do everything we can to uh, to make sure that, you know, the brown M&Ms are picked out of the bowl and yeah, all, all that kind of stuff. I know you're a bit of a diva. So you know, <laughs> you're storming off the set with five minutes to go and leaving us. I'm not even I'm not lurch. even wearing shoes tonight. I'm just going in barefoot. I don't care. <laughs> I think character's cute. I like it. I think we've done a good job. It, it does kind of look your, like your little tw Twitter avatar come He's to perfect. life. Um, He's perfect. Let's, let's not bury the lead here, Duncan. You come to us. To, the, the timing of this actually worked out really well. You were, you were on a couple of weeks ago. Um, it didn't work out because of the audio issues. But now you're back. And the timing is very, very serendipitous because Duncan Jones, my goodness, you come to us tonight in triumph. In I... triumph. Fresh from victory on the internet battlefield. I come here with a, with a, with a Chevy Chase of a Kickstarter. Um, so I'm, I'm absolutely thrilled that, that we were trying to raise a certain amount of money to make this graphic novel that, that, that Alexi, Alex de Campi and myself were making. And um, we, you know, we've, we've really done incredibly well on it. So let's just let's talk about it right now. So, you, so the, some of the movies that you've created are part of what I believe you call the Mooniverse, right? It's the moon <laughs> and, then, and then Mute, which is, right now, which is currently on Netflix. And now this third project are all part of the same shared universe, correct? Well, look, I, I do, I, 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 my, my, I get like a, a, it's only in that, you know, everyone wants to do that. Everyone's talking about that. Really, it's an anthology. You know, it's three movies which have, which happen to take place in a, in a, in the same future setting, in the same future period. Um, but, but they are completely separate, independent stories. They all, they're all standalone stories. But thematically, there's a couple of similar, you know, there, there, there's some similar issues that they cover. Um, and yeah, they're, and they're very different kinds of movie because Moon was kind of a kitchen sink drama. Mute was kind of this 70s noir thriller. And and Maddie is really like a like an old fashioned 80s action movie. Right. So so given, given as you said, they're, they're very much standalone films. What creatively yeah. do you gain by having them all share the same universe? Well, I think for myself, you know, creating a, a you, you, you spend so much energy creating a world and you start getting into all these details of what that world is. It, it feels it feels so wasteful to just throw away all of these little ideas that you've been kind of painting in the background of one movie and then not be able to follow up on them. So I think what's fun about it is, is especially with science fiction or, or sort of something in, set in the future, like a, a futurism, um, you, you create this, you, you create the, the, the fabric of this world and you want to start exploring it and not just have it in the one project. So right. by, by doing this, I kind of get to explore it and already know it and, and basically get to delve into it deeper in, in other projects. So let's get straight to it because I know you have limited time. You've got to, you've got to catch a plane. You know, we've got bad yeah. weather coming in over the, over the island of oh, Kauai yeah. tonight. So you may need to get out of here. So let's get straight to it. I'm going to go over here to Monitor 2. Uh, and we're going to talk about Maddie once upon a time in the in the future. So you know we hear about Kickstarter success stories. All the, I mean, I'm going to ask you like what the project's actually about. But right away, the headline is you launched this thing what 24 hours ago with a fifty thousand dollar goal. It's currently sitting at two hundred four thousand one hundred fifty two dollars with twenty nine wow. days still to go. Duncan Jones, you have smashed it, smashed it. <laughs> we are we are actually kind of a little bit shell shocked. We're trying to work out like uh, extra things that we can give people in, in appreciation and, and uh, you know, just for having made this amazing goal. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's, in, it's incredibly exciting for us. I mean, you bring, I mean, you obviously bring like a lot of pedigree to this as a, as a, as a well-known uh, film director and filmmaker. Do you, I mean, I, I, I suspect you had some confidence that this would get funded, but surely you didn't expect this. No, I think I, I had no idea. I mean, I've, I've, I've watched Kickstarters in the past and I've, and I've seen some of them exceed between, but before, you know, beyond anyone's dreams and, and some of them crash and burn. I had no idea where we were, were going to go with it. You know, we set an amount of money that we needed in order to print the book and, and get this thing done. Um, but, you know, I, I had already paid for making the book myself. So, um, you know, I was, I was, I was uh, very hopeful. And the thing is, I've got such incredibly talented people that are working with me. It was, it was really, you know, my confidence came from knowing that they were delivering extraordinary work. I mean, you know, Gary, you're, you're from the UK originally and, and you, 
know 2000 AD and some of the artists that you know we probably oh, yeah. grew up Big loving. Time. But you know, Glenn Fabry and Simon Bisley, and and there's, there's just incredible people who are working on this book. Oh yeah, I mean, I, I definitely, I mean, I grew up with like you know Dave Gibbons and Chris Weston and and all all of those guys that you know yeah. defined kind of a whole uh, uh, generation of comic book characters uh, for me. I mean, yeah, and you, you and I are this, roughly the same age, both cheeky chappies from from yeah. England, made good, <laughs> both made good on the uh, on the other side of the pond. Um, Absolutely. <laughs> So I'm going to show I'm going to show a couple of images here um, from uh, it's Mad Maddie is how you pronounce it is that correct Maddie one, one yeah yeah Maddie once upon a time in the future so here's I mean, and there I know there are you can actually go check out 17 pages of this on the Kickstarter right now as a little preview there's a little video that you have as well but I'm just showing That's a couple right, of these um, couple of these pages really really cool who is the that? first Alex? 17 pages are Dylan Teague um, who did who did the work on this who's who's incredible and and basically because the book is it's it's a huge tomb. Uh, it's about you know it's over 200 and it's about 230 40 pages giving these 17 pages really just sets up the start of the story so if you want to have a look at what we've been doing um come and come and download this the free first 17 pages i love it i love it and so okay so the first movie in the moon in this i, I never get tired of just saying the word mooniverse i just like it so the first <laughs> movie in the mooniverse obviously was moon that's the movie that put you on the map Mute was the second movie in that universe. That's on Netflix right now. For yeah. the third chapter, why not do yeah. another movie? Why, why a comic book? Why a comic this, book? This is a big sprawling story, and um, you know, I think I think because it is is not an established franchise, I think trying to do something that's this big, which is essentially a road trip around the world in the future, um, going across the U.S., going to Shanghai, um, and essentially back again. Trying to do that on an independent film budget was always going to be very unlikely and, and when we started budgeting it budgeting it out early on we realized now nah, this is not this is not going to ever be made as a film or at least not in the not in the in the near future i i don't know if you're watching the stream duncan but uh, i give adam a lot of grief but sometimes he does wonderful things and right now he is wearing a very impressive moon style <laughs> uh, space suit in tribute to you and your work this is really lovely. I appreciate that. <laughs> very, very, very cool uh, indeed. I noticed that even even William William Gibson, the the god, the grandfather, the godfather of cyberpunk, uh, gave you a uh, thumbs up on Twitter the other day. That must have must have been a nice feather in your cap. Oh man, I, I've been um, very fortunate that he's been kind of following the films that I've been making and seems to like them. So you know, I'm a I, he he is a he's he's one of the people who got me interested in science fiction in the in the first place with you know with burning chrome and neuromancer um and um yeah no that's a huge that's a huge deal for me i love that um i want to take you all the way I, I like to do this with my guests i always kind of just like pretend that like my guests don't know who you are or what you've done even you know, someone as uh with as as auspicious a filmmaking career of yours take me back to the duncan tell me back because we never had this conversation take me back to the beginning were you were you a kid running around with like a vhs camcorder when you were a kid how did you first get the filmmaking bug yeah um i was you know i i have a fairly unique upbringing um and my dad was very much into music and um his his initial impulse was to try and get me to learn an instrument and um, I was just not having it. So he kept on trying different instruments, went from piano to drums to saxophone, guitar, bass guitar. Um, and and I, just, I just wasn't taking, I was not interested. I didn't care, I didn't like it, didn't want to do it. Um, I regret it hugely now, but um, wasn't interested in music. And he, you know, he himself had always had like a fascination and interest in film. He ended up doing some acting um, and actually wanted to do some directing, um, but never, never had that opportunity. Um, so he got this old um, eight millimeter camera and started. We started doing animated shorts together. So we were using Smurfs and Star Wars figures and things like that. And he was showing them how to basically shoot one stop animation and cut it, um, and you know, with with bits of tape and stick it back together and then pr project it on an old projector. That's kind of where I started off in film. You know, Adam, I don't know if I should do this, but that, Duncan's kind of opened the door there talking about making movies with star wars figures do i do i do i want to open this door i don't know if i do or uh, not what is the door is the door um, to the same joke you tell everybody no the, the the door would be showing my wonderful wonderful um film that i make uh with star wars figures oh you've got to oh. show it i i'm I'm, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to pull it from i'm literally trying to pull it right now hold on a second let me see if I can find it. It's down here somewhere. Duncan, um, did I hear you say you gotta show it? You have to show the Star Wars. You're going film. to regret this. Oh, I no, mean, he, yeah, he, yeah, he's, I he's, mean, gonna, he's gonna regret Albert. it. He's gonna regret it. <laughs> Hold on. Uh, I'm trying to find it right now. I'm finding it like at the last second here. Give me a you second. You gotta give me more cowbell, Garrett. <laughs> 
I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna deeply, deeply regret this. I am pulling it right now. Hold on a second. Is it in here? Oh wait, maybe it's not. Uh oh. Maybe oh, it must, it's not. Must be gone. I guess we'll just have to move on. Did I? Don't, did I take? Don't, did I take it down? Up, <laughs> what did I do with it? <laughs> Leah, it, it, Leah, if you're listening, please drop it into the Discord, and maybe we'll show it later in the show. But Duncan, you know, as a filmmaker, I'd, I'd love to show you my, uh, my reel. And it's a, it's, I, I, it's, it's, it's a very, I'd love to see it. let me tell you, it's, 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 it's impressive. Okay. Leah doesn't know where it is. You know what? Maybe it's for the best. Maybe we'll show it on another show. So, okay. So, so Duncan, at a, at a young age, you're running around, you're, you're yeah. doing kind of movies in, in your back garden and stuff like that. Is that how you got started? Absolutely. That's how I got started. And then again, because of the unique circumstances, I ended up on a lot of film sets. Um, and a couple, there was a couple of films that my dad did where it was big, beautiful, fully realized physical film sets. You know, things like there was a film called Absolute Beginners where they built an entire block of Soho in the 1950s. Um, and, and, and it was just this extraordinary and, and incredibly real imagination. You know, it's just it was um, this, this place that didn't exist but did. And then again, I got to go on the set of Labyrinth and, and Goblin City of that. And again, getting to be oh, in these wow. places, these imaginary worlds, and um, you, you can't help but soak that stuff up when you're oh young. Oh my God, I can only imagine. I can only imagine. Uh, Adam, I have found it. <laughs> I found the video. <laughs> Shall I show it? It's, uh, it's, it's please, 30 seconds we're long. Time. Oh, it's 30 seconds long. Now, yeah, I, will, I, will, I, will, I will say only this by way of a disclaimer. Uh, I'm very proud of this. This is my first work in the Star Wars universe, long before Lucasfilm like, ever came along and started paying me. This was like my Star Wars fan film that I made. Um, and I can, I, can, I can only tell you this, at the time this film was made, um, I was under the influence of some very strong medicine. Uh, I can't remember what it was I was taking or what for, but it definitely, it took me to creative areas that I, that I, that I didn't know uh, were, were possible. Uh, creative depths maybe might be the best way to describe it but i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna mute the jukebox real quick um and we're gonna go over i'm gonna show you 30 seconds of my first my my first work uh in the star wars universe and i think you're gonna find it very interesting mm. hold on hold on hold on i got i still got chrome muted hold on here we go here we go here we go here we go <laughs> better roll it back these are your droids i am a jedi and i am tricking you into <laughs> thinking that they are not <laughs> oh, you have tricked me. <laughs> Go along and take these robots <laughs> with you, even though they aren't yours. <laughs> Thank you, my son. I mean, look, you know, it, it, it was a low, it was a low budget indie production. It was it was what it was. Um, <laughs> there were there were definitely uh, some issues with uh, uh, drug abuse with the actors uh, on the set. They, t t prescription medication was flying around the place. And, you know, that's that's the result. And, you know, it's very early in my career. I, you know, I, like, Duncan, when you go back and look at your very first films, you kind of cringe, right? I mean, you know, I, I feel like I've come a long way as a filmmaker, just like you have. I'm sorry, Gary. I'm just I'm still trying to take that in. I, I, I feel like, um, you know, when you when you first watch a Kurosawa movie and you feel like, how can I ever, ever? Right. Oh, right. It, 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 both, it both inspires you and makes you want to just quit at the same time. Right. How can I, you know, where, what's the point? What's the point? Yeah, why, why, why continue? Yeah, no, that was. Oh, you know what's funny actually is is was there audio on that? Um, yes, but if you didn't hear it, it's probably did you a favour. The way the way we have things set up, I don't actually hear the audio for, okay. for that. So, I'll, so I'll, I'll, I'll send it to you via a private link, and you can get the full experience. I assumed, I assumed it was a silent movie, <laughs> which made it even more. I mean, it, pr it probably should have been. Yeah, I mean, I did tell you to mute the stream. I will, I will, I will send it to you afterwards, and you can, you can, if you've got thirty seconds artsy. to spare. And I totally understand if you don't. Um, but I mean, you know, so actually that was Leah doing the cinematography and the camera work there. She was really directing. I was just, I was, that was more, I, I would say that's more of an acting reel than a directing reel. <laughs> well, I mean, it was phenomenal, whatever, with or without sound. It, it's, it's, um, it's, it was amazing to see a grown man play with such a I mean, band. I mean, yeah, I mean, a gr grown man is, you know, a very, I think we're using a very flexible uh, definition uh, <laughs> at this point. Um, so Duncan, you, you, you from from one from one director to another, one filmmaker yeah. to another, um, yeah. you, you've you've had a you've had a fascinating career. You kind of did that thing where you had like a breakout indie film that everybody loved, and then you got to kind of do like the bigger film with uh, with you know more budget, and then you got called up to like the mega mega leagues yeah. um, uh, with the Warcraft movie. Now I'm I'm, I'm curious to kind of like what that 
escalation felt like for you and like now that you've kind of made movies at all these different levels like where do you want to settle down would you be would you be content to make another mega budget blockbuster kind of movie or would you do you feel more comfortable kind of returning to your indie roots uh genuinely i i i'm i'm not sure i don't i mean i've done you're right i did i'll throw some numbers at you moon cost about five million dollars uh source code and Mute were both just under $30 million. And Warcraft was <laughs> a yes. lot. A lot. An awful lot. <laughs> a lot An awful money. lot. Um, and and in, 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 in all honesty, the number of cooks in the kitchen absolutely was in complete, um, you know, it was tied to those budgets. So right. we were totally on our own doing whatever we wanted to do on Moon. Things got a little bit more, you know, uh, there was a little bit more back and forth with with uh, source code and, and mute. Um, and Warcraft was absolutely uh, three and a half years of many, many discussions. Right. Um, so it's a it's a whole different process. Now I know, you know, you having worked with with other directors who've worked on big films, not everyone has those same experiences. And I think a lot of it comes down to everyone being on the same page when when things get started. Right. And, um, you know, I, I, I am a much wiser man now than I think I was when I did Warcraft. Um, so I think I would be going into it with a lot more, with a, with, certainly with a lot more experience about what to expect and probably how best to navigate those choppy waters. Yeah, so I mean, you touched on a fascinating subject there. I always, I always like to talk to people about like what they've learned from their experiences, and I, and I and I know because I've been there as well. Working on these big mega budget movies um, can be wonderful, but it can it can also be very frustrating. Like if you if you were to go do a to go to do another big movie, uh, what what lessons from uh, from your from your career so far would you would you bring with you into into like the next big thing that you did? In as charming and uh, British a way as possible, I would try and work out. Who am I answerable to? Who are the people who are really making the decisions rather than the, you know, the, the, the gumph of buffer between myself and whoever that person or those people may be? And can we try and agree what the end film we're trying to make is up front before we start making the movie? I think if, if I could nail those two things down, I would be comfortable going back into a big film. But, is it just when you when you get when you start making films at that you know because it gets it gets scary right but I've I've been at this level as well like when you're making movies that are so big that their success or failure can actually move like the stock price of the parent company like that's a big <laughs> big deal like is it is it just is it just about politics do you have to become like a better diplomat a better politician to navigate move filmmaking at that level I don't know I mean I think I've, I'm pretty good on that front it really is just about clarity you know I think I think the issue is always do we all see the do we are we all looking at the same goal you know are we all trying to make the same movie um and it's and it sounds ridiculous of course you are there's a script it's written but the problem is when at least in my experience on the biggest movie i made those were the goal posts which kept moving um and i think i think that's the that's the frustration frustrating bit but i think i think it really helps to have done it you know whether whether it worked out the way i wanted or not because i definitely know what you know what to look out for now yeah, I hear you. Um, so you're working on this comic book right now. What, what, what? Obviously, we and everyone's kind of locked in their homes right now and kind of twiddling their thumbs and trying to find ways to uh, pass the days. I'm kind of wasting my time doing this nonsense. What do you? What? How, how are you filling the days uh, these days, Duncan Jones? Apart from the comic oh, book, I've got. Well, I've got two beautiful little kids. So I've got a two-year-old and a four-year-old. Um, and me and my wife are absolutely, you know, chasing after them and trying to keep them happy and entertained and and. Uh, and safe and not killing themselves. So that occupies most of our time. Um, I'm also in the middle of, you know, I've, I've done the writing on Rogue Trooper, which is the, the 2000 AD film I'm hoping to do next. Um, so we're, you know, we're, there's a little bit of back and forth on the on the planning on producing side of that. Um, and then there's a couple of other little film things that I'm working on in the background. And then obviously there's this Kickstarter, which has really kind of dominated in the best possible way the last week or two. Yeah, I mean, you've, I, I'm going to find that link again and put it back into the chat because you've, I mean, you've got to, you've got to just be thrilled with with what's happening on that Kickstarter right now. It's, it's, um, you know, if if I'm if I may, just just to uh to throw some names at you for those people who are interested in comics: Dylan Teague, Duncan Fregrido, Glenn Fabry, LRNZ, Ed Okanya, Andre Ahojo, Simon Bisley, Rosemary Val Valerie O'Connell, Yuko Shimizu, Tonchi Zonjic. Pia Guerra, James Stocko, 
RM Guerra, Chris Weston, Rufus Daglo, Annie Wu, David Lopez, Christian Ward. These are all amazing comic artists in their own right, and they are all doing parts of this book. Now, is that because you're Duncan Jones? Like, not, I, I mean, I, I couldn't pick up the phone and get those people to do a comic book with me. No, I think it's because um, Alex, who I'm working with, is 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 an absolute guru and and uh, you know knows knows what she's doing and knows all the people involved. Um, she, uh, Alex DeCampi is really you know the is the is the is the, the the link to all of these people and has made it happen. I've got a I've got a question here from Seuss in the chat. And by the way, Seuss, thank you. You reminded me. If you if if anyone has a question uh, in the chat uh, for Duncan Jones, toss them into the chat right now, and I'll if if I, if I like it. I'll pass it on to Duncan. If I don't, oh, I'll yeah. ignore you. I'll just, I'll just <laughs> blank you. Um, but but feel, feel free to ask a question of Duncan right now while we've, while we've got him here. Uh, but Seuss asks, Duncan, this is a kind of a fun question. Can you explain 2000 AD to Americans? Yeah, I think so. I, I, whenever, I, whenever I try and explain it to people, basically I say it, it's like, it's like heavy metal and Marvel had a baby. Um, it's, it's basically a collection of different of characters and stories. It's a little bit political, very satirical. Um, it's got a couple of characters you may have heard of, and a lot of them you haven't. Judge, Judge Dredd, Dredd being the most famous the most one, right? Well, no, exactly. But Slain, Rogue Trooper. I mean, there's a, there's a you know ABC Warriors. There's there's loads of really really cool stories and characters in it, and it's been around for quite a long time now. Um, and in the UK, it really is the preeminent comic. Um, yeah, and, and it's also a place where a lot of comic artists and writers got their start, right? Like huge names came out of 2000 AD. It's kind of like, almost did. kind of like I this mean, SNL of comics. It is, it re and, and for American comics too. So a lot of the artists that you love in American comics who are British, you, you, most of them started off doing 2000 AD work. Nemesis hmm. the Warlock, that's the one I always like. Oh yeah. What's your, um, I mean, I, I know the answer to this because you were kind enough to let me look at the script, but for the benefit of our audience, um, tell me what, what, what is Rogue Trooper and what is your approach to the, to the, to the ro adapting the Rogue Trooper comics into a feature film? <laughs> um, Rogue Trooper, I, well, you know what? I'm, I'm going to hold off on that if that's okay, just because uh, it, it's, it's, it is something I'm going to have to talk about at some point. But um, You want to you keep your powder dry? Yeah, yeah, I do. I appreciate that. When, so do but, but but do you think that's is that if I were a betting man should I bet on Rogue Trooper being the next Duncan Jones film that we see or is there a chance that like something else will make it past the finish line first? Dude, I have no idea when anyone's going to even go about starting to film again. It's it's so crazy right now, and there's look the, the thing about smaller films or independent films, films which are not financed through one of the big studios or through the streamers, is most of the almost all of those films are dependent on what are called uh, foreign sales estimates. So basically different countries bid for how much they are willing to pay for your movie so that they can basically make the money showing the film in their country. And right. normally what you do is you pre-sell your movie to those foreign countries all over the world. And then you gather that money together and that becomes basically what your budget is for the movie that you're gonna make. Right now, foreign sales is in absolute, f uh, am I allowed to swear on here? Well, uh, you, we always say if you can't say it on Jenny, Jimmy Fallon, you can't say it here. But, you know, I feel like it's PG-13. You get one freebie, so knock yourself it's out. Already, no, no, it's already, it's already out. <laughs> um, you, you basically, all the money that you can basically put together from those foreign sales, that becomes essentially what your budget is for an independent movie. And these days, that market, because of what's going on with the coronavirus, is in an absolute shambles. Nobody knows whether people are going to be able to go back to, back to the movies again. So... Right. Independent movies, I think, are the ones that have really been kicked in the uh, testicular region. Um, and, and, and I think, you know, studio movies are fine. Streamers have it absolutely, Life of Riley, because they know where their financing is coming from. It's from the people who are at home, whether they can go to the movies or not. So right. they're fine. They're able to start making movies as soon as, as, soon as things open up. But independent movies, it's, it's going to be really tough out there for a while. A uh, couple of questions from the chat. Horde or Alliance? <laughs> well, I mean, anyone who's seen the Warcraft movie probably knows that I have a I have a bit of a love for the uh, for the Horde size side um, between between Smart the Durakan character and Orgrim. Uh, you know that that, <laughs> that that friendship, those buddies, those best buddies. Basically, I was like working the relationship on that, trying to make it like just feel like a buddy movie on on the on the Horde side. Here's a good question uh, from the chat. Um, it's a comment and then a question. Moon really had an emotional impact on me. The story of isolation and questioning your identity. If there is one key emotion you wanted people to take away from Moon, what would it be? Um, I think, you know, it's funny. It's actually taken me doing 
the other movies or the or to do mute and the the maddie story to really get in my own mind get it straight what it was that was really important to me i think it's responsibility basically life's going to throw you crazy stuff and you're not always going to be expecting it and you're not always going to be ready for how to deal with it but um you will find a way you will you will work out how to take responsibility for the poo that gets thrown at you and you will work it out and you will find a way to move through it and and deal with it and that's this that's the case in in moon and in mute and for sure in in maddie as well uh, here's a question from the chat that i like what is the best subway sandwich um <laughs> are you a sub are you a subway man i'm a jersey mike's guy oh Ooh. what what do you like to get at jersey mike's it's the it's the it's the tuna sandwich with with the all of the vinegar and all the stuff that they throw on it. oh i love that yeah i love it like a, a, a tuna good. sub that's, yeah that's good but it's funny actually because as much as um, those kind of sandwiches are, are delicious and you think of america when i was a kid there was this place up in scotland called oliver's and um it it made the best tuna sandwich and it was weird because I'm not even a huge onion fan, but they used to like super thin shred a whole onion. And it was about an inch thick on your sandwich of just shredded onion. And that it sounds delightful. I, that sounds fantastic. I want that sandwich. Is, is Jersey Mike's a chain? Because I don't know if I'm familiar with it. I believe so. I've got the name wrong. I think it's called Jersey Mike's. No, because I see people in chat right now going, oh yeah, Jersey Mike's is the bomb. But like, I, I, I don't know if there is one here in the city. Maybe it's another oh, thing. Uh, it's definitely an LA thing. I don't There's know. There's a bunch you. of people confirming it is a chain. So yeah, I it's a chain. Check. Sure. I wonder if I wonder if there's that. The, you know, what? I'm not going to go down a rabbit hole here, but I think there actually might be a Jersey Mike's. Um, it's from New Jersey, says a yeah, little happy. Yeah, I think I could have figured it out by myself. But <laughs> I do appreciate that. Thank you for the for the hot tip there, Jersey Mike's. Where are you, where, 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 where do you think that might be from? Oh, I mean, maybe he wears a sweater. I don't know. Maybe he likes to wear sweaters. I don't know what's going on. Uh, <laughs> Duncan, I don't want to—I uh, don't want to miss miss your flight, but I'm about to bring my next guest on. Would you? W do you need to go? Would you like to stick around and talk oh, to yeah, Paul Shear? I'm going to stay next to them for a minute. I want to listen to. to I want to listen to this. I got a little. I got a little something. Uh, I forgot to do it at the top of the show, but I got a little something that I want to share with the audience before we bring on Paul. He's going to be on in just a moment. Very excited to talk to Paul Shear. But I'm going to mute the jukebox because you know, as you know. Uh, Adam, uh, Duncan, and if you've been anywhere near the internet in the last 48 hours, you'll know this. We made a big announcement here on Animal Talking. Uh, Danny Trejo, our, the wonderful, wonderful guest Danny Trejo was on the show last week, is such a big Animal Crossing fan and, is, and, and enjoyed being on the show so much that he wanted to find a way to kind of continue um, his relationship with the show. And we wanted that too. And so we asked Danny to kind of become our official uh, kind of roving correspondent. Uh, here on Animal Talking, in, and in the weeks ahead, we're actually starting this next week, Danny is going to be taking us to his island, which is called Trejo's, and he's going to be showing us around, touring uh, touring the island with us, a little kind of like video diary, a little travelogue, uh, and he's going to be introducing us to all of his uh, furry and adorable animal friends, and I can't wait for the first episode. I think we're going to be shooting some footage as early as next week with the, with the hope of uh, premiering it sometime in June. And we have this wonderful new logo, this new animated logo that I want to share with you. I'm going to press, I really hope this works. I'm going to press a button here right now and we're going to see if this works. But here's a little preview of what's coming up on the show next month uh, with the debut of Danny's Diary. <laughs> Very excited about Danny's diary coming up in the future. That's just a little preview, a little preview of things to come. Um, Danny, uh, so Duncan, are you a Danny Trejo fan? Are you a fan of his work? Would you be interested in working with him on a, in a project one day? Oh, absolutely. I think the day that I heard Machete was getting made, I was oh, so excited. Just the best, just the best. Um, uh, it is, Gary. Yes, yes, Adam. How oh, can sorry, I, I was just going to say, could we uh, get a shout out uh, to panda musk for helping put oh yeah i must i must i must thank uh chandana and i'm not going to say his surname because i'm going to mess it up but chandana who did that amazing danny's diary logo he also did our animal talking logo and panda musk uh who did the animation uh for that little logo there and uh, there's the there's panda musk's twitter uh popping off in the chat right now that was really really cool uh, so thanks Panda Musk and thanks uh, Chandan and thanks to all the volunteers and everyone. I didn't I didn't ask them to do any of this stuff. They just showed up in my inbox. Oh, here's a logo. Like people really want to help out, and I love that kind of community spirit that's around the show. Um, but it is time. It is time to bring on my next guest. And even as we speak, 
uh, he will be maneuvering his character into position and it will be being dragged into the into, out of the green room and into the live uh, area uh, Duncan or whoever is currently pulling your strings I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you uh, to, uh, to to shift to scooch on down well, the couch do you, mind, do you mind if I work the camera is it okay <laughs> no by by all means let me let me give you a close-up there you go there you go there you I'm go there's your close-up that's my job let me let me get behind the camera I'm, I'm a cameraman <laughs> Oh, I, I thought you meant work the camera like, you know, like uh, pop up some Magnum or Blue Steel type looks, but <laughs> there you go. Oh, no, no, you've turned it off. What are you doing? Duncan, you're supposed to be a professional. You're messing with messing my, my, my very expensive uh, camera equipment here. Oh, my goodness. You might, you might be a big time director on your own sets, Duncan, but this is my show. Just changed I'm, the lens. I just changed the lens to a three millimeter. We're we're in good shape now. I, I mean, I'm, I'm going to take your word for it because I honestly have no idea what that means. Um, <laughs> my next guest is um, a very very funny and talented uh, uh, comedian and actor. Uh, he has been in um, so many amazing shows. He's been on Thirty Rock. He's been on Veep. He has a show on Showtime right now called Black Monday. Um, uh, funny or Die, Human Giant. So many amazing uh, comedy vehicles that he's been a bit a part of and i'm so so pleased uh we you know we love comedy here on the show and so to have such a talented uh, and auspicious comedian my goodness what a treat what a treat please welcome to the show paul Shear. <laughs> Go. Hello, everybody. Hello, oh, my hello, gosh. Hello. Hello, Paul Shear. What a show. This is fantastic. How are you, sir? How are you? Thanks for I'm joining us. I'm doing very good. I'm doing very good. Your island is beautiful. Thank, thank you for you, giving me you, your dodo you. code. It's very hard on you it. You know you don't give that out willingly. Yeah. No, 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 no. You can keep that to yourself. I'm going to give that out to any Tom, Dick, or Harry. Uh, Paul, first of all, I always like to talk to people about their fashion choices. Some people put a lot of thought into what they wear on the show. I'm getting a very, very strong Marty McFly vibe from you right now. Yeah, this is my Marty McFly outfit. Uh, and, you know, I, I didn't know what I was going to wear here today. And I, I thought I could do a couple things. I thought maybe I would just, you know, pop on these, uh, like, Jedi robes. But I think Marty McFly might be the best, the best outfit I could possibly have. I love it. Are you a big Back to the Future fan? <laughs> I love Back to the Future. It's so good. Where do you fall on Back to the Future? Do you? I, I feel like when I was first watching them, people didn't really love two, but I, I love two. But now I feel like two has really come back in a major way. I mean, I think that I think the original movie is in that very small category of films that is basically a perfect. Like this, it's just. Perfect. Oh yeah. And and I, 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 go ahead. I want to hear your opinion. Yeah. Tell me about. Oh it. no, my son has just come in to, to start, <laughs> start talking to me. So if you hear you hear him, this is the big difference between a normal talk show and a regular talk show. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay. Sorry, he left in. A, he got a little upset with me. No that is mad. No I'm a parent. I'm a parent. I get it. I get it. Um, you know, an, an opinion is a little bit divided on the second film, but I think the second film is brilliant. The way it revisits the too. first one is brilliant. Yeah, I think it was a little bit ahead of its time. I mean, it definitely folds in on each other. And I like the third. I'm, I'm, I'm all in on the Back to the Future trilogy. I feel like it shouldn't be remade. It shouldn't be rebooted. Just leave it as it was. Uh, and it was. I really was happy with it. Are you checking your tweets or something? You should be looking at your phone while you're on the couch right now. Are we, are, 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 oh. Are we boring? Oh, you? sorry. Are things to do? <laughs> okay, thank yeah. you. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> you know, I'll put that away. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to take it out. You know, I just got a lot of stuff going on. You know, just, you know, no big deal. <laughs> now, now, Paul, I want to talk to you about your, your comedy career because like I've, you are you are ubiquitous. Like you are in everything. You've been in all these big, big shows. You just I mean, I was watching. I, I'm a big Kirby Enthusiasm fan. I'm watching Kirby Enthusiasm in this most recent season and you yes. pop up again. And I'm, and I'm almost like, yeah, it's almost like I'm waiting for the other for the Paul Shear <laughs> Jew to drop. Like, when is he going to show up in this show that I like? You are just everywhere in the comedy world. And so I guess it makes sense that you would end up here too and I'm very, I'm very pleased about it like you are, are you like the hardest working man in comedy what's going on you know I try to keep it out you know try to keep busy but like the idea too is like you know the comedy scene is very kind of is small in LA and so if you if people like you I guess you can stick around for longer than uh you know, I, I, you know, you get to pop up in a lot of different stuff because you're friends with everybody else. And I think, you know, for me, when I'm casting things or I want people in, I want to know that the person's going to deliver. So I feel right. like people know, you know, know what you can do. And on Curb, you know, one of the most intimidating things is to do a scene against Larry David. But the cre uh, one of the creators of Curb created the show that I did for a long time called The League. So we had this connection and, you know, just to go up there and to feel like that someone was rooting for you behind the camera because Larry is you know, Larry David, he's uh, amazing, but you don't want to mess up. You don't want to, you don't want to make a mistake. I feel like I made the biggest mistake with Larry David when I went to go shake his hand and this is pre COVID. <laughs> so I was like, Oh, 
And then I was like pulling it back and then I'm nervous. Like now I'm like the whole time I'm doing the scene, I'm like, he must hate me. I shook his hand. I, I have to apologize for this because you just know that you basically, you know, Larry is going through lives, his life and everybody is an obstacle. So you just want to not be that obstacle. Uh, and I felt like when I shook his hand, I was like, ah. I did it. Kick myself for that. I'm still kicking myself that I shook his hand. I'm like, oh, Larry, Larry, Larry David is uh, my comedy hero. Uh, he's my idol. He's one of the few people. I mean, I, I meet these people all the time. It's my day job, but mm -hmm. I, he would be one of the few people that I would be kind of tongue tied if I were to meet him. And I'd be very nervous around oh. him. Like he has this curmudgeonly reputation. I feel like I don't want to end up on. I don't want to end up on the wrong side of like a Larry David you know, outburst is, was that, was that a fear that you had? <laughs> yeah. You don't want to, you don't want to be too effusive. You don't want to be too coy. You just kind of want to be at the middle, just kind of chill. I guess like, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of finding the right temperature, you know, it's like, you don't want to burn it. You don't want to undercook it. And, you know, talking to Larry, he's by the way, an exceptionally lovely, nice guy. And for me, we could talk about basketball. I'm a big basketball fan. So that was a good middle ground because obviously all i want to do is talk to him about you know his amazing career whether it's that sketch show that he did early on in his career called fridays which is like the the competition to saturday night live right you know um just all curb and seinfeld and even sour grapes but you gotta just it's all in check it's just normal guy normal guy I'm if not, i talk to him about I'm golf, I think be i'm not yeah. such a funny comedy it's it's it take it you know i i, I can't take it seriously <laughs> <laughs> Paul, I want to talk to you about your experience on talk shows because you've done them all, mm -hmm. right? You have done them all. My first experience was doing The Letterman Show, which is the most daunting talk show that you could ever possibly do. David Letterman, I grew up idolizing David Letterman. He was the best. And so I went on David Letterman and um, and Biff, the stagehand Biff, who was back backstage before I went out there. Again, getting nervous, don't want to upset David. Uh, I call him David Letterman. I don't want to upset Letterman. <laughs> and... Um, and Biff looks at me, and Biff has a gap in his teeth. I have a gap in my teeth. I would make my Animal Crossing character have a gap, but they don't have that yet. Uh, and I said, uh, and, and Biff looks at me and goes, oh, you got a gap in your teeth, like just like me. And he points at his gap in his teeth. And I go, yeah, and just like Letterman. And he looked at me like I was insane. I'm like, no, that's a thing, right? Letterman has a gap. I know he has a gap. And that's like, like a, a trademark thing of his look. And he looked at me like I said the most like never say that here it was like it was a look that you would get before you like get killed in a horror movie and it was like and ladies and gentlemen paul Shear. i was like oh no <laughs> like just walking out with that hanging over my head i was like and then the entire interview i'm like he does have a gap though right I, you know i don't again you just don't want to piss these people off um but you know gary i i've also in doing the big talk shows i've also kind of hosted my own very unique talk show this is a very unique talk show animal Wait, crossing but i you hosted yeah. a talk show <laughs> I did. I hosted a talk show um, called the. Uh, the it's called uh, uh, After Darth. It was a Darth Vader talk show that Wait, took what? place on the Death Star. Yes, uh, it was. Um, it was sponsored by Disney. No one will ever see it. No one will ever ever see this. Hold um, on a second. Brent, yes. we got, hold on a second. I, I, we got to park the bus here for a second. You hosted a Darth Vader talk show called After Darth, mm. and 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 yeah. you played Darth Vader. I played Darth Vader. I did not do the full-on voice of Darth Vader, but the Emperor had a band. It was kind of like the Cantina band led by the Emperor. Uh, and I was co-hosted by my brother, who was uh, looked like me but wore a Hawaiian shirt, kind of out of canon. Uh, <laughs> and we did a full-on recreation of the Death Star. Like, it looked like the, uh, the Emperor's throne room. We put a wooden desk in there, threw up a fern, and uh, and then we'd oh have interviews with people across the Star and Wars you were, like, galaxy. You sitting behind was... a desk with like a coffee mug, like I am right now. Yes, I had, I would have my little cards. I uh, I would be like popping them on the desk, throwing them in the air, drinking from hot cup of coffee, uh, interviewing people like Lobot, you know, which is uh, Lando oh Calrissian's head of security, uh, talking to like Wedge Antilles uh, or one of like. Uh, uh, Padme's handmaidens, you know, just sort of like across like the canon of the show was all over the place. Um, but it was, you know, we do cooking segments. Uh, you know, we had a uh, Yaddle on Yaddle, who is the female Yoda, and she was also a sex therapist. Uh, you know, so we would do a lot of these like 
dumb bits. Um, we even did like a 30 for 30 about the pod race where Anakin uh, won, the first human to win a pod race. And it was just, you know, a very straightforward, serious 30 for 30. This is the most just like amazing the last... thing I've ever heard. So like your other, your, <laughs> your, so the guests that you interviewed on the show were other characters from the Star Wars universe. Absolutely, yes. So we got to like kind of create whatever we wanted. And the cool thing was because uh, Disney was behind it, we got to use all the the things that you could never use um in in life like we could we could have full darth vader costumes full you know uh, recreation of the millennium falcon using the sound effects using the video footage you know we got to really create something that was uh very much in canon of star wars which is you know you know it's so rare to be able to use music and video clips and stuff like that and we got access to all of it uh and then like i said it never it never aired uh, but that's, there are eight episodes of it. You eight recorded episodes of eight Dark. episodes of a Darth Vader talk show and we will never see them. Is that is that the headline here? I, I think that is it. And you know what? Maybe it's for the best. I, I, I don't know. I, I, like all, all I'll say is um, for as much as I enjoyed it, I would imagine it would also uh, make people incredibly upset. Uh, like it definitely was not taking Star Wars seriously <laughs> is, at was, all. Was that, was that the reason? Because like it wasn't serious enough. Like they didn't want to do comedy in the Star Wars universe or something. You know, I, I you know I think actually you saying that out loud makes me kind of feel like that probably is a major part of it. I think uh, you know I think oh, no, we were Christmas doing this right when Force Awakens. Again. What was yeah. it? Christmas special all over again. We should do yeah the holiday yeah like the, got the holiday special hey, vibe, but good. Uh, quick, quick! I just got an urgent text on my phone here from Dodo Airlines. It appears the uh, runway is clear and Duncan oh, is ready. Go. To, oh, Duncan! Uh, get Duncan's on the plane. Duncan's personal private jet is is ready. Okay. Yeah. Um, Duncan, thank you, thank you so much for um, for for uh, uh, giving us uh, the time and uh, plugging your Kickstarter. Not that you needed to. Four four X <laughs> its goal in twenty four hours. My goodness. Thank you, sir. Um, uh, will you will you now be leaving uh, leaving the I'm island and going back to LA? I'm flapping. I'm on my way. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Duncan. Thank you, Duncan. Duncan, Hi, Duncan. Duncan Jones, everyone. Thank you so much. He's on his way out. But I was excited when he was working the camera. I was like, I've never been directed by Duncan Jones. That would have been a real treat. <laughs> now I got some more room on the couch. Now, yeah, now, now you can I, kind I of hold really, yeah, really how you couch moved for over little. just an inch. Just okay. gave myself a little bit more, yeah, just a little bit more spacing. That's all. <laughs> yeah, spread it. Do a bit of man spreading. Why not? That's what it's all. Yeah, you, got the couch, you got a couch all to yourself. Okay, so all right. Again, I just, I just, want, I need, I need to hear myself say the words. You played Darth Vader in a Darth yes. Vader late night talk show, and you recorded after Darth. You shot eight called After that Darth. Was, which that was that was paid for title. by Disney, and Disney probably in their right mind decided that it was not time for that yet. It was not time to mix comedy so and Star Wars th in that way. This wasn't some uh, fan project. This was the real. This was a legit thing. It's a legit thing. We rented a uh, rented a very big stage. Created we recreated the Millennium Falcon. Uh, one of my favorite bits was a deleted scene from Star Wars that we played, where uh, they're all hiding in like the um, in you know the cargo hold, and uh, everyone's blaming their farts on Chewbacca. But since no one understands Chewbacca, Chewbacca is getting more and more upset about it. Uh, <laughs> And like I said, when when um, when Padme's handmaiden came on, all I was doing as you know as Anakin was just like, "What does she say about me? Does she talk about me? What what is, what is she? You know, what, what did she ever say anything about this? Did she say I gave her that? Uh, we did have a wonderful time by the lake in Naboo, uh, you oh know. So it was, this is gold. Just, this is gold, Paul. I mean, we uh, we we just had a lot of fun. The Bespin weather report was great. Just sunny and cloudy all to the time. Never you know, sunny with a mix of clouds. <laughs> Uh, you know, so we got to do a lot of fun, uh, a lot of fun stuff. I mean, the cooking segments were amazing because we got to create these creatures that, you know, were oozing pus. And, you know, we had like, you know, like we, I think we made a Sarlacc soup, you know, and, uh, oh my God, and, cooking you know, segments. And, I love it. Yeah. Yeah. So we really, we really kind of embraced everything that we could. And it was written by huge Star Wars fans. I'm a huge Star Wars fan. Um, everyone on our staff was, and all the guests were. So it was like, it was a chance for us to all embrace this thing like we got to play in the best sandbox of all time which so, i imagine is what you got to do i mean you got I, to I, create I, I mean i i got to do that in I, I guess kind of a more serious way but uh you know i never ever seen i've seen has seen the result of that but i'm i'm fascinated 
by 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 this. I mean, like, I, I just I have so many questions for you. So, like, who was Barry, your band? Who's to Which... say that in in Darth Vader's uh, temple that he wasn't running a talk show there? I mean, why I mean, not? He's got. They, a, he's, I mean, that was the, that was one of the questions I asked myself in Rogue One. Like, what does Vader do when he's not at work? I mean, he, 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 know, he does a talk. He does a talk show. Takes a nice shower. A ba- you know, a, a back to bath, and then uh, you know he's got to run the Empire again. I, this, this is this is this is amazing. Um, so, no, we, you know, I mean, we're not moving the on from this, are we? we? we I mean, we are going to move on shortly, but I've got, I've got to finish this out because Paul has like just opened up this 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 this, this cave of wonders. Um, I had I had a joke, but it's too late to do it now. But I'm going to do it anyway. But the best bin report, of course, cloud, cloudy with a chance of getting your hand chopped off. Oh God! <laughs> you got to watch out for falling hands. You got to you know, watch it's out like, for falling yeah, hands. Just, yeah. I mean, there's a good chance that that hand fell on someone's head. Who knows where it ended up? I mean, look, that cyber's gonna, that saber's gonna bonk you on the head. You know, you're gonna have a lawsuit. Lando's got to go to court, and he's got good lawyers. I mean, Lando's lawyers yeah. are. I mean, look, yeah. You, if you're Lando, you're happy you have him. But if you're against them, they're the worst. You know, yeah. they're real. They're real tricky guys. Yeah, I, everybody I, I, knows better, that. Better, better, it's better to have Lando inside the tent pissing out than outside the tent pissing in. That's the way I, I look at it. <laughs> Which is, you know, uh, one of my uh, novelty shirts that I have now made uh, that I'm raising. <laughs> so, I mean, here's the thing, Paul. For better or worse, we've seen recently, just today, we've seen that, like, fan uh, momentum can 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 make a difference. We've got the Zack Snyder Justice League cut yes. coming out officially now. Maybe, maybe we could get this <laughs> get this on Disney+. Plus. I mean, they're, they're here's the perfect outlet for it. Uh, you know what? Uh, I I I, uh, I doubt that will ever happen. But uh, yes, why not? Let's release the sheer cut. Uh, let's get it out there. But here's the thing that I have to say about Zack Snyder's cut. And uh, no, no offense to Zack Snyder, it's but the the anticipation is too high. It's way okay. too high. Is it, it doomed, to, doomed to disappoint? I think it it would be right because it's like like we've asked. It's like tell us the truth. It's out there. It's out there. It's out there. And like it is. And then today I read. It's not even really finished. They're going to spend like twenty to thirty million dollars. Yeah, they got to finish it. Twenty million dollars to finish it, and it's just mm. a high bar to nail. Because now I'm like, before release the Snyder Cut, I was like, all right, yeah, that'd be interesting. That's anecdotally, it's interesting. And then now that it's out there, it's like I've read the other Indiana Jones scripts that didn't get made, and I right. love those. But I'm not saying Frank Darabont make that movie. It, it you now have a you have a a higher bar to cross. Like the movie has to almost be better. It's got to be better than it even was. In, in in many in many ways, the fan expectation for this is going to be like higher than any comic book movie ever, right? And that is a high bar to clear. Well, because, yeah, because I think as fans, I think we've all felt this way. You go into a film and you are expecting so many different things. And sometimes it really works and you leave and you feel so triumphant. And when it misses and when you feel like you didn't get your money's worth, you, you start to create these fantasies. Well, it was this and it was that and that didn't happen. And that's why. And you you created this like world why it was OK, why that didn't happen. And now we're actually getting to see what the actual thing was. So it is, I mean, I wouldn't want to be in that position. For me, I love being in the position where I just told you, I did a show called After Darth. No one will see it. Everyone can be like, oh, that sounds funny. And then the case is closed. Maybe it's better (laughs) that way. It is. It's much better that way. I think it's better to be, you know, to have the Colin Trevorrow script out there. And Colin Trevorrow can be like, see, see. I don't yeah. know, but we didn't get to see it. So all of a sudden, you love Colin Trevorrow. You're like, I mean, yes, it is. It's kind of like it. you know, when when the dog the dog chases the car all day, but when it finally catches the car, it doesn't know what to do with itself. Exactly, and you know, and look, it's and I I, I am a fan. I am a super fan. I am a, a comic book geek and a sci fi nerd. I do all these things. I, I do believe it's good to have those hopes. Like it's it's better to sit around a table and go, what if that happened? It would have been so much better if that was here, or that was that. You know, it's like, but then when you actually are presented with it, and but, but there are two bad Justice League movies. One is just five hours, and the other one's two. <laughs> you know, like like how how upsetting is that? that I don't want that as a fan. I want the fantasy. Give but you're good. But when it when it finally drops on HBO Max next year, you're going to check it out, right? You have to. Oh, absolutely. I mean, look, by the way, I would love to hear your opinion about this. The name Zack Snyder is bigger than Justice League. It's like oh, yeah. Zack Snyder. Yeah. Justice yeah. And I bet you there was a lot of contractual back and forth about that as well. Yeah. I mean, you know, so, I mean, you know, we'll see. I mean, boy, oh boy, I don't know. I mean, the only thing I'm hoping for is that they let Henry Cavill keep his mustache in this cut. That's all I want to see. I want to see the mustache. I want to see the mustache just before they CGI it out. Oh, right. So you oh, want the mustache? Some, 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 some of this stuff is, is kind of like entered, you know, filmmaking 
legend already. But no, I, I think you're right. Oftentimes, I think these things are better in the abstract. And I wonder if the hardcore fans, the hashtag people have been mm. campaigning for this, have put themselves into a position that when the movie finally comes out, they kind of have to love it, right? Even if they don't, they kind of have to say they love it. Otherwise, what are they, what are they, what right. are they going to do? Kind of just like, yeah, you got to be like, it's almost like Huckleberry Finn. Like, I love painting this fence. It's the best. <laughs> it is great. Thank you. You know, it's like, yeah, or Tom Sawyer, I should say. Like, it, yeah, it's like, yeah, it, it's um, it's a tricky thing. I don't know, you know, uh, but I think based on anything I know about internet culture, it doesn't feel like you have to be uh, cemented in your opinion. I feel like this comes out, people don't like it, they're going to rail against it. Like, there's right. no other side to it. There's not like, there's not like two warring factions. It's only like the release of the Snyder Cut. <laughs> there's not people out there going, don't release it. So, you know? so like for me, I'm in the middle. I'm just like, yeah, I'll watch it. I don't, I'm not, I'm not protesting watch it, about it. Out, just, out of, it. just out of curiosity, you want to see it, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, look, I, I'm a big fan of actually like kind of these later DC, I'm a big Marvel fan, but I like, I loved uh, the uh, the Birds of Prey movie and I love Aquaman. I mean, anytime you get an underwater fight scene where an octopus is playing fire drums, I'm in. Mm. Yeah, Aquaman. I like, yeah, I, like, I, I like that they just went all out with that one. I think it's the way the way to do it. I think they kind of embraced the craziness of it finally and started to find some success yes. when they went when they went in that direction. Nicole, I mean, when I once I saw Nicole Kidman with a spear in the first two minutes, I'm like, guys, that's it. Can I pay oh. you another fifteen dollars? Yeah, it's all Let's done. Let's go. You've already. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, one of the reasons why I'm so glad to have you on the show, and it's evident to anyone who didn't know this already, that you are you are a true believer. You're a nerd. You're a comic book guy. You're a, you're a superhero guy. You love these movies. You love these things, and you're a gay Gamer, right you're a video gamer too you, you, you play, i do you yeah play I, I, I mean I've, I've grown up i'm not like look i'm not competing i'm not going to be in any esports competition as a matter of fact one time i was hosting like a thing for xbox and like, get in there and i was like oh okay and then just immediately <laughs> estimated like within seconds like i don't even think i blinked before i was like my head was like chopped off um but no i i am i mean I'm, i love i love I love casually playing games and casually meaning like I will play a lot, but I'm not, I'm not out there competing in the, uh, in the internet. You know, I'm not on the call of duty live streams and stuff. No, I mean, I've, and I've said before when I've had people on this show talking about video games, like if there's a difficulty level, I go for like the easy baby ass baby mode every time. Like give me yes. the easy, give me the easy mode. Let me have fun. That's why Life, I'm here. Life's too short. Sure. I don't want to fight the same boss 50 times. No, I'm like, that's why I love that Spider-Man game that just came out for PlayStation. And that's why I hate that new Jedi Fallen Order game. It's like, why is it so hard for me to climb up a wall, guys? Let me <laughs> jump on the wall, climb up. Stuck in this train car for 10 minutes. Oh, come on now. Uh, <laughs> but no, like, and, and so like my go, you know, like I, 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 so like a lot of the times now I'm a dad, I have a three-year-old and a five-year-old. So my big go-to is games that I can kind of get in and out of because i can get sucked in like when i was before i had kids bioshock let's do it like i'm going deep you know red dead i'm there grand theft auto but now i need to kind of have like a little bit of a timer on there because if my wife ever catches me with my headset on it, i i'm basically i'm basically like chipping off like a moment of divorce it's like i i, I know when she sees with that headset <laughs> on she's like okay we're one step closer to divorce now <laughs> and of course and of course Animal Crossing is your current cup of tea. This is your real character that you brought over from your island. Yes. Uh, lovely to have you here. What is, tell me what, what is going on over on your island right now? Who are your friends? Who are you beefing with anyone? Do you have do you have do you have favorite animals? Over I just there? kicked what, somebody off on? the island. You did? I kicked somebody off the island. I think his name was Joey. He was very much into weightlifting. And uh and I just was like after a while he was asking me if I'm pumping, if I'm doing if I'm doing my reps, if I'm doing my sit-ups. And I was like, you know, enough. Like, let's can we expand the conversation past seriously. The Our jocks only want to talk about one thing. Exactly. One thing. I was like, can we just have a conversation here? You know, uh, <laughs> so, uh, you know, right now we're we're kind of, you know, look, we haven't had K.K. Slider, but from everything that I've heard, by the way, uh, the Dapper Rapper is kind of like the new K.K. Slider. So I'm very excited oh. that he's coming oh, up. Oh, yeah. I mean, and I, 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 I'm going to try to engine. I'm going to pull every string I can to pull off a Dapper Rapper kk slider commerce a, a collaboration down the road you know we've had t-pain i mean that collaborating that. here we've got we've, had, we've we've done some amazing stuff musically and this is just the beginning um i mean yes uh but no i mean my island is very like you know i'm i'm enjoying it it's very meditative for me to do this and i've actually you know i know that there's a lot of hacks you can do with animal crossing i play a very straightforward game although today i did get to sell my bells for 610 or my uh, turnips for 610 bells which is a a huge thing i was able to pay off my house uh you know th things are going well for me I did, feel, you you know, I'm, to, did you have to visit someone's island to do that to get that turnip price oh yeah oh yeah yeah my my island i think my highest bell price is like 74 dollars i'm like are you on. are you on the turnip uh, exchanges or how are you how are you getting access to these yeah, prices? Yeah, i am is that cheating maybe <laughs> it is. I, no I no on, it's I all part of the fun i think 
I'm paying a five dollar a month Patreon to get on a list, on a queue, and I'm waiting on that queue. And you know, the saddest thing today is like my kids are home. Obviously, we're you know we're all like staying, hashtag stay home, and uh, I'm I'm homeschooling them and I'm, and and checking my phone off to the side to be like, okay, eighteen on the queue. Get ready. Get my dodo. Cook, get everything ready. Get my turnips in there because last night I waited an hour and a half. Got over there and I forgot my my turnips. I forgot oh, my turnips. No, seriously, you forgot to load up on your turnips. Uh, it was a real, it was a real, like, it was a real moment. My wife saw me walking around my house being upset and she's like, why are you upset? And I had to lie because I could not tell her I just forgot <laughs> to bring turnips. I mean, I again, I forgot to bring my virtual not. turnips with me. When she sees me with the switch in my hand, it's, she looks at me and, and shakes her head. Uh, but no, I, I'm, I'm loving my <laughs> switch. You know, for me, it's, it's, uh, I tour a lot and I go around the country a lot and I'm in, on sets and I'm in trailers and, and the Switch is so great because I know a lot of people have that thing where it's like the game box and you can put your whole Xbox in there and there's a screen. But hey, the Switch has been like my new go to, you know, whether it's like Luigi, Luigi's Mansion or, you know, Mario Kart or even NBA 2K on this. I just, it's, it's my favorite thing it's in my backpack it's, all the it's, time. it's a it's a wonderful wonderful i absolutely love it i love it and, and and by the way any opportunity to shout out luigi's mansion 3 what that was my personal favorite game of last year oh, what a game what a it's game so great i love it did you did you were you, were, were you able to play any co-op with luigi and guigi because that's when the game really comes into its own i think whoa no i didn't see like i'm still like i'm still kind of new because i got luigi man uh, luigi's mansion at the beginning of quarantine and then that was right about when animal crossing came out so i quickly dropped luigi's right. mansion and now i've look there's nothing else i'm doing i i tried to get away from it the other day to play like mario kart with my friends and i was like forget this I don't need this right now. I need this. I need to go back to my island. I need to be planting azaleas. I need to be, uh, you know, I need to be trying on outfits. I need to be doing a lot of stuff. There's, you know, there's holes to digs and fossils to assess. You, you can know, stop, uh, you can stop and eat clapping anytime, by the way, Paul. <laughs> it's getting a bit much. It's getting a bit much. <laughs> oh, there you go. No, 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 isn't, isn't, isn't that the story of poor <laughs> Luigi's life, though? Grows up in the shadow of his brother, finally gets a moment in the spotlight with his own game, Luigi's Mansion, and Animal Crossing just comes along and like steamrolls right over him. He's got, the guy can never I mean, break. You know, I, they, I'm, a, I'm like, I'm a fan of the Clippers, and the Clippers are uh, the cursed team of the NBA, and I feel like Luigi is the cursed Luigi, character. Luigi, Luigi is the, the LA Clippers of the Nintendo world. Yes, he he uh, he he is never going to get his due. Even even when the game is that good, I mean that's the thing. It's like I feel like every everybody that I know that games stopped everything else for this game, and I think we're in this really kind of wonderful moment where we are like you know, there's so few shared experiences that we have anymore. You know, I think like Game of Thrones or Breaking Bad or like kind of these TV shows that we really rally behind. And to have a game like this that kind of pulls everybody in from every background, like my hardcore gamer friends are on this too. And it's, it's, it's the best way to kind of hang out with, you know, it's, you can go over and visit people's islands. You play the drums, you go home, you feel like you uh, hung out with some people. I love it. I, I must come over and uh, visit your island sometime. It, do, you will be a little bit disappointed, but please do come anytime <laughs> you'd like. I do have a toilet. I do have a toilet in one room without a divider wall. So uh, it okay. makes for awkward. All right. Uh, I, I'm, 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 I'm getting a sense of the vibe on your island. That's fine. That's fine. Um, uh, although I did create a, a beautiful outdoor bathroom, uh, which I really feel appreciative. Of. It is like it's it's just in the middle of the woods, and I feel like you know people if they're out you know digging or shaking trees, maybe they want to go to the you know hit the potty. So there you go. I have a nice. It's all covered up by trees. You can kind of go in there and feel very like you have a nice privacy thing. It's it's one of the I nicer like features on my kind of au naturel. I love it. I have a, um, I have a little mini Disneyland going on. I do have a mini. You have a, a, you have a Disneyland. Fun, I'm trying to build it. I mean, it's it really centered around the teacups, and I got I got a bunch of toys <laughs> and things, and yeah, it's it's as close as I can get. There's no roller coasters yet, but you know, it's it's getting there. So there's I, teacups. Um, I know. Paul, yeah, I know, I know that you're um I know that your flight leaving is leaving the island at eight thirty. So I don't I don't want to keep you. I don't want you to miss your flight. So but there's definitely a couple of things that I want to get to before Please, you ahead. leave. Um, I know that you're a very active uh, podcaster, right? You love to podcast. Yes, I am. I am indeed. Yes. And there's one in particular that I want to talk about. Well, there's a couple, but I, I want to make sure we hit this one first. Okay. You have a podcast right now that I think is just great. And everyone right now is doing what they can. If you're a content creator you're out there trying to make something to help, you know, get help make this terrible situation that we're all living in right now a little bit easier. That's what Animal Talking is all about. And you have this. I, I didn't know this was a thing, but when you brought it to my attention, I was like, my goodness, I, I got to follow this podcast. It's so cool. You have a podcast and it's called Paul Shears 
World's Greatest Comic Book Club. And you did, this is like an official Marvel thing yeah. that you did. I'm going to show the trailer in just a moment. But first of all, tell me what Paul Shear's World's Greatest Comic Book Club is. Yeah, so basically it's a show that I'm doing in conjunction with Marvel. And I'm bringing on amazing guests like Damon Lindelof and Phil Lord, who is, you know, directed uh, or produced Spider-Man to the Spider-Verse and 21 Jump Street. Uh, uh, Gillian Jacobs from Community, uh, a bunch of really fun people to talk about their favorite Marvel books. Um, you know, I'm I've written comic books, and I always know that to get into comic books it can be very daunting. So what we're doing is having people come on and say like, "This is my favorite series. I read this," and so it's kind of like a a book club where people are suggesting things to you. If you like what they are saying then you can go off and read. So I feel like it's kind of a starter kit. And it's also, if you love comic books, maybe there's some things that you might have missed. And we're doing it all um, around the idea that, yes, we're talking about great books, but we also want to raise awareness for local comic book shops because local comic book shops are a small business that need our help and support right now. Um, they are struggling, and but many of them are still open, even though you know there's stay-at-home rules. Um, they are doing deliveries. They are doing curbside pickup. They are they're even sending things to your house. So we're kind of every episode highlighting a specific comic book shop in, around the country and just kind of helping people get to the idea of like, oh yeah, my local comic book shop. Let me let me even send them twenty bucks and say just. Put me a give me a bunch of stuff. So that's what we've been doing with the show is sort of talking about great books and then making sure that people support their local comic book shop. I think that's amazing and it's a very worthy cause and I love what you're doing and I'm going to mute the jukebox right now because I want to take us over here to monitor too. Um, the okay. first episode uh, with Damon Lindelof is already out. Um, is it how many are you did six right? How many are currently out? Uh, yeah, so I think we're like a, I think tomorrow or tomorrow Thursday's episode four. So it's once a week on YouTube, and yeah, they just keep on coming out for the next six uh, for the next let's, couple of weeks. Let's show a little bit, a little, a little clip here from uh, Paul Shear's World's Greatest Comic Book Club. <laughs> I know we all are right now in this hashtag stay home lifestyle. Uh, we are living through a pandemic right now. Many of you are frustrated. Many of you are bored. Many of you are looking for something to do. Take your mind off of what's going on in the outside world. And this show is endeavoring to help you with that. Um, I am Paul Shear. You might know me from shows like uh, Black Monday or The League or NTSF SDSUV. Um, also, I write Marvel comic books occasionally. I wrote this Cosmic Ghost Rider book, but also Spider-Man, Deadpool, and uh, even a little Guardians of the Galaxy. What I wanted to do was gather together people who love Marvel books as much as I love Marvel books to talk about some of their favorite Marvel books and maybe give you a chance to create a little book club with me. And we can kind of read books that we forgot about, never read, or even just revisit some classics. I'm excited to be here. I want to introduce you to our crew. Uh, check out who's working camera. Uh, check out who's working lights. Uh, and over here is a uh, person <laughs> taking notes. But I'm not doing it alone. I am doing it with uh, someone who I think is just uh, the absolute. All right. So we, we get the idea. That is absolutely yes. wonderful. I, I fully oh, applaud thanks. that. There's already people in the chat are asking for that link. They want to know where they can go get this podcast. I am going to, I'm going to drop that into the chat yes. right now. Uh, go check out on YouTube, uh, World's Greatest Comic Book Club. With Paul Shear. Who is he? So Lindelof, who are some of your other guests? We had uh, Lindelof, Gillian Jacobs. Uh, we had W. Kamal Bell. We had Phil Lord as this week. We have um, Jason Manzukas and uh, Yasser Lester. And I'm forgetting who else we had. I think that may have been it. Uh, that's maybe the six. But uh, yeah, we or we keep on, you know, we're going to keep on trying to do more of these. Um, it's been so much fun for me to kind of be turned on to certain books that I never really knew before. Like there was a great book, this uh, uh, Marvel Man, which became Miracle Man, that was written by Alan Moore, which I never heard of. And it's great. So I, I feel like that's been really fun just as a comic book fan to learn more about books that might have just kind of slipped by me. Now, Paul, you also have another podcast called How Did This Get Made? Where yes, you have a yes. lot of fun at the expense of movies that you think are bad. <laughs> And oh, no. this, of course, oh, no. is a podcast that I'm very much aware of because you did one of my movies. You, uh -oh. did, an after, you did an After Earth episode. And uh, I'm going to run just... I, I didn't even... I didn't have... Any, <laughs> yeah, Paul, oh, no, I'm, Paul's uh, making a break for it. Trap, He's making a break for it. <laughs> I'm going to run... Yes, you're in the basement. You will find all the doors are locked. Um, this, is, this is Fantasy Island, isn't it? I, I honestly... I swear, I swear to God, I don't know even where this is queued up to. I just... I'm going to run like a random 30 seconds 
from oh, uh, no. the After Earth episode of How Did This Get Made? Will Baby Will Smith, hear it, so was I... he doing an <laughs> accent? Yes. Well, that was the thing oh, I was yes. so or, confused about, because he was British. Like Certain people in this movie were British, but not and others British. not. He, yes, everyone was doing what I think was supposed to be a future accent. Yes. Really? Yeah, yes, that absolutely. In, yes, and, and the person who was doing it the least was Will Smith. Yes. Um, and the person who was doing it the most was one of the guards that, uh, early I, on in the movie. I think one of the, the guards that tells Jaden Smith that he can't be a space ranger. Yes. He has a, he's very <laughs> British. Okay. All right, that's quite enough of that. Quite enough no, of that. Yeah, yeah, we were getting along so well. I First of all, let me just first of all say this. Uh, I couldn't hear what I said, but I apologize. <laughs> oh, it was all, it was all very uh, complimentary, Paul. All right, good. Oh, good. Um, you know, uh, you're like, look, this is the question that people ask me all the time. Do anyone, does anyone ever, you know, come and confront you about being on the show and um you i would say you have you are the second person that i've had a direct run-in with who's that the has, yeah um the first was the director of a sandra bullock movie called all about steve um <laughs> where uh <laughs> it's an interesting film as well uh but uh she like uh but you know what everyone seems to have a a good good sense about uh, you know a sense about it like we are jason june and i we're all writers and performers and i i direct and and produce and i understand you know we come at it from a ultimately from a place of love but also i apologize i apologize no honestly uh, paul in, we, in all seriousness uh, we, we talked about this after before the show and, uh, not i am i am very very sanguine about after earth i make jokes about it all the time um, and anyone, I, I stay every day. It's, it's like the go to uh, put down that I get. Oh, what do you know? What are you w worked on after Earth? Um, well, I will say that, Gary, you've created one of the seminal moments of our show. Like, there are a couple of moments that are like highlighted moments of how did this get made? And in this episode in particular, there's a moment where like uh, Will Smith is away from his family and they're asking him to blow out the birthday candles. And, um, and he, and, and it's kind of revealed that his kid's off camera and he blows out the candles and, but it looks like Will Smith blew out the candles. And my wife, who I host the podcast with was confused by it. She thought that like Will Smith used his mental abilities to <laughs> blow out the candles. And so this moment had become like people have made animations of June's like mind being blown because she thought like, Oh, well he's got this power. Cause obviously That's incredible he can, he can ghost. You know, if he can ghost, he can certainly blow out a candle across uh, of the universe. My and uh, <laughs> so it became like this moment that people have immortalized as uh, there's a full cartoon of it where June is like, wait a second, what do you mean? And like, well, no, his kid was behind the camera. I'm, I'm glad something good came out of the experience, Paul. I'm glad I was, I was able to provide you with uh, with that at least. The, my favorite episode, I have I have actually, beyond that one, I, I, I do listen to your podcast. I think it's great. My favorite one, and I, after I saw the movie, I immediately, immediately had to go listen to your podcast. Is Geostorm? What a movie! Oh my gosh! Well, look, I have a thing for Gerard Butler. Put him in anything, I am ready to go. I love a good Gerard <laughs> Butler movie. Like, I mean, I believe that like Olympus has fallen. Like, more of that. More people getting their throats ripped out in a, in an eighties like like Den of Thieves. Like, he's creating an old school action film that I haven't he is. seen. And I kind of a throwback so kind of guy, the way that he plays these characters. And I love Gerard. I've, I've hung out with him. And I feel like his he also kind of has a – like there's certain points where he's he's not like as super buff as like a Chris Hemsworth. Like when I watch Extraction, which I think is great, like you're right, I buy it. But sometimes – like it, like sometimes, like it looks like uh, he's getting tired in those fights, uh, Gerard Butler. Like especially in the <laughs> in the last in the last movie, the 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 third of that trilogy was it London has fallen or whatever. Uh, I'm like, it seems like they want to take a break. Like, can we just time out? Time out on this fight. Let's I mean, how many how many more things can fall? I don't know, but I mean, as long as as long as they're still making money, they're going to find things that can fall. Um, I love it. And I, I highly recommend to everybody in your audience, Den of Thieves. It's on Netflix. I have nothing to do with this movie. It is a great <laughs> film. It is awesome. Uh, but but really, Geostorm really is on a whole other level. I mean, I, oh, I, I, it's just incredible. I mean, Geostorm is beco has become the the go-to greeting of a How Did This Get Made listener. Jason, June, and I will be walking around city streets and people will yell, Geostorm! <laughs> back. My kids have been frightened by people yelling Geostorm at me. We have buttons and pins because... Like we just started yelling Geostorm throughout the show, and that is that is the only way that we know. Like um, when I was in Chicago, but when we were doing our tour, I was out getting food, and this guy just kind of settled up to me next to me. It was like Geostorm, 
I was like, all right, there you go. I love it. Uh, yeah. So no, uh, Geostorm is a real, I mean, what a, what a great film. What a great. <laughs> now, Paul, Paul, I know, I know you're going to turn into a pumpkin in just a few minutes, eight 30, but I, I, I've got to do this one last thing. I'm so glad we're mm-hmm. going to get to do this together on the show. Paul, when, when I first reached out to you to come on the show, yeah. I said to you, and I, I couldn't, I was like, am I dreaming this? Did I really remember this? I said to you, like, oh, was there nice. a thing that you did where you like buried a time capsule in your backyard, but it kept going wrong? And he was, oh yeah, I totally did that. But then we couldn't find it, right? You went and spoke to the director. You did oh, yeah, everything you could cool. to unearth this clip and we couldn't find it. I thought, I was like, oh yeah, I know who that is. And I went to go look for it. And I think in the process of all these media uh, mergers, Funny or Die was bought by another company and some of the videos were lost forever. And this is a video I did literally one afternoon with one of the writers from Human Giant. And I went to go find it, I couldn't find it anywhere. And I, I reached out to the director, Eric Capel, and, and the writer, and I was like, what, where is it? And he's like, I don't know, I think it's lost. And, and then Gary, you had the brilliant idea of using Twitter Brain. Well, in in desperation, because we couldn't find it, everyone looked for it. I think Adam actually had a hot lead on it. But like finally this morning, I so wanted to get it on the show because it's really one of my favorite pieces of comedy you've ever done. And this is why like oh 10 God. years later, I'm still saying, oh my God, that clip, like it just tickled me. You know, like- 2009, it's, 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 we shot this. 2009, 2009. One so this is baby Paul Shear you're about you're about to watch in a moment. But yeah, I finally sent up a flare this morning on Twitter after days of trying to track down this clip after you who starred in yeah. the clip could not find it. And of course, and Twitter found it, found it in five it. minutes. Five minutes, they found it. I know. What a, what an amazing it. age we live in. Um, so here is I'm gonna I'm gonna mute the jukebox again. I'm gonna run this. I have to cut off the last five seconds because it's really really not like I, I don't want to get into in trouble <laughs> it's with. Not, yes, it's not uh, it's not family friendly. I'm well, gonna it, drop. It, it is, I'm, I'm gonna, dro- I'm gonna drop the link into the chat for anyone who wants to watch the full unedited clip. I have to kill the, the cut the final joke because it's too much for this even for this show. Um, where did everybody go? Why is everyone off camera? Everyone Sorry, I went to see what the hell Paul's doing. Wait, Paul, where did you go? go? Sit down. I just want to go check out the, the, the turntables real quick. Sit, sit still. All okay, right, all right. For the <laughs> for the next three minutes, um, we are gonna we are gonna watch this little clip. It's called "Clothes to the Future." And I stake my comedy reputation on it. I still believe that this is one of the... I watched it this morning. I was like, yeah, before, still, before you stick your still as funny as I remember. Right. Still as well, funny as all, I remember. Please, before you stick your comedy reputation on it, you are going to cut it off before the final joke. I am. So, I am. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be hovering over the pause button. You are going to leave the audience with a little bit of the anticipation. And I'm going to give them the point. link. If they want to go watch it on their own time, in the privacy of their own homes, they can. But I cannot show the final joke on the I on understand the, on the it. I, this is why I'm dressed like Marty McFly. And I just want to say, uh, Gary, I'm a huge fan of yours, and I love what you're doing here with uh, this Animal Crossing talk show. It was such a treat to be oh, here. Thank you, Paul. I cannot wait to watch Danny Trejo talk to little animals all over his world. Uh, I cannot wait for that. And uh, and Adam, uh, you're killing it. I, I know that there's a lot of contention about whether or not your VOs are. Uh, you don't. You, know, you don't need. To, you don't need to address him or compliment him. It's fine. <laughs> um, Paul. Uh, thank you for coming on the show. As, as, as your parting gift to us, I'm going to play uh, almost all, almost all of Clothes to the Future. All right. Well, before you play it, let me uh, wait, wait, let me give what, let me what, shoot what, off what? a party popper, right? Maybe I should. Oh, uh... Okay. Yeah. Get <laughs> get your shit together. All right. I'm going to put uh, Paul. If you if you can silence yourself for three minutes because we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna run this clip. Here it goes. Okay. Here it goes. Good day, sunshine. Good day, sunshine. Alex! Who are you? I'm you, from the future. What? Me, from the future? I'm a time traveler? Yes. And look at you, you look so cool with your futuristic clothes. No, that's actually what I'm here to talk to you about. In the future, these clothes are not cool. What do you mean they're not cool? They're, they're shiny and like, look at the boots! I know to someone in 2009, these seem like cool clothes, but believe me, they are not. Wait a second, so if those clothes aren't cool, then what are cool clothes? What you're wearing. Really? This? This is cool? In the future, dorky 2009 clothes are the cool clothes. So what I need you to do is take those off and bury them in the backyard next to the maple tree. Okay. I'll go bury your clothes. You'll thank me later. (laughs) Jackpot. (laughs) The fuck is this? Alex! (laughs) Wow, you must really like time travel. You were just here like 
two seconds ago. What? I know it appears that way to you, but it actually took me two months to save up enough money to travel back here. Look, that's not the point. When you bury the clothes, I need you to use plastic bags. Uh, duh. Sure, of course. Well, duh, obviously you didn't do it, because when I dug up the clothes, they were all shitty. Okay, you know what? I think I used bags. Thank you. Well, you didn't, okay? Because I was there. I was there. Just use plastic bags. Okay, I'll use bags. You gotta be kidding me. Whoa, look at you, man. Time travel takes its toll, huh? Okay, the bruises aren't from time travel. It's because a bunch of dudes in the future dressed like you beat me up for looking like this. Uh, then why are you still dressing like that? Because you buried an empty bag. <laughs> it was a joke. I thought you thought it would be funny, you know, because you said buried it in bags. <laughs> yeah, and why can't you just buy clothes like this in the future anyway? Because I keep on losing the auctions on eBlorp. eBlorp. It's a futuristic eBay, you idiot. You really couldn't have figured that out? Really? You just needed to ask that? You couldn't just write a note and put the clothes in the bag? All right, that's where I have, that's where I gotta stop it because the final joke is too hot for TV. <laughs> too hot for TV. But a lot of people- but, uh, but okay for internet, yeah, so it was yeah, okay. okay. Okay for the internet. They, a lot of people right now, they want the full link. They wanna see where that, where that eventually goes. Uh, it's posted there in the chat. Um, I'm so glad that I get to share that that that, that lost we've unearthed a lost uh, comedy gem. Paul, I know you've got to go. I see you frantically popping off your party poppers uh, right now. I to, yeah, I wanted to celebrate. I wanted to use them while I had them. You know, I didn't want to. Um, I have to, I have to ask you uh, before you leave. I did ask you before the show. Can, uh, Duncan, of course, ran off with it, getting a, getting away with this. Um, would you please tell us a, a, a professional celebrated uh, comedian, Paul Shear? Please tell us a joke. Oh, yes, of course. Okay. So, um, what, all right. So, uh, okay, here it goes. What did the pirate say when the ship's steering wheel got stuck on his pants? I don't know. What did the pirate say when the ship's steering wheel got stuck on his pants? Arr, she's driving me nuts. All right. Okay. I like it. I like it. It's a classic dad joke. It's a classic dad joke. I'm taking it. I'm He's taking it. Joke. I'm, I'm, ex I'm accepting joke. it. I told, I said we wanted bad jokes. Um, yeah. Paul, I know you. I know you have to. I, I know you have to run. I don't want you to miss your flight. I know you've got another a, a podcast. I'm actually uh, literally recording. going to record a podcast about bad video games. That is, I'm going Ooh. to go on How Did This Get Played, which is a spinoff of How Did This Get Made, where we're talking about uh, bad video games. We're talking about Street Fighter, the movie, the video game. Oh my god! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh bad. My god. I thought you said bad video games. Thought um, Street Fighter, the movie, video games. The video game. It is not the Street Fighter. It's the <laughs> it's the video game based on the movie Street Fighter. The movie, um, the game. Uh, Paul, you, t you told us before the show that you had a hard out around 8.30. We've, we've unfortunately got, I, I, if you need to go, but I, of course you're welcome to stay for the rest of the show with the Dapper Rabbit. I would love to, to go. stay and I, I'd love to come back one time and be an audience, but I do have to go. It was lovely to be here. Uh, everybody, thank you so, so much. Thank you, Paul. Uh, Paul Shear, everyone. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. What a wonderful guest. That was such a blast. Thank you, thank you, Paul. Lovely to have you. And please, please come back again soon. We would love to have you back. Love to have you back. That was wonderful. Paul Shear, what a delightful guest. F funny, yeah. funny man. Um, now- Also, that Star Wars show, Gary? Oh my God. Adam, how, like, how, do, we, how do we get that out of the Disney vault? We've got more chance <laughs> of seeing Walt Disney's frozen head than seeing that show. <laughs> Let me tell you. Okay, so listen, the cornerstones of late night, as I've said many times, this show is, the, uh, is a tribute, a love letter to one of the great, um, pop culture cornerstones of, of this great nation. And that is the late night talk show. A couch, a desk, monologue, celebrity interviews, um, live music, stand-up comedy, funny jokes. We do all we do all of these. Well, maybe not so much the funny jokes, but we do most of the other things. We and we've had, we've had comedy on the show tonight. We've had celebrity interviews. And now it is time. Now it is time for the, oh, this is actually always personally my favorite part of the show is the, is the musical guest, the musical guest. And we have an incredible musical guest joining us on the show for the, he's going to be here until the, until the end of the show. And then after the show's over, we're going to go over to his stream where he's going to fire up his stream and he's going to continue. And that's going to be the after party. We did that with Billy. It was really successful. Uh, and we're going to do it with Dapper's 
stream tonight and I'm very, very excited. Um, you know, we've been very good. One of the things I want to do is try to give a showcase to uh, really talented musicians that I discovered on Twitch. And my three, so I'm going to complete the trifecta tonight, Adam. My three favorite musicians I discovered just just randomly by wandering around, who's this guy? I mean, this this next guy that we've got coming, Leah, Leah literally said, who's that guy with the beard? He looks interested. Clicked on his channel, never looked back, and now he's on our yeah. show. We had Raquel Lilly on the show. She's an incredible and talented singer-songwriter on Twitch. Glad to give her a showcase. She was our first musical act. The incredible, very handsome Billy, super talented, came on the show. Ended up in a live musical collaboration with T-Pain that continued well into the small hours. We love, love, love musical acts on this show. And I'm very, very pleased uh, to bring you, uh, arguably, maybe, maybe my favorite uh, musical guest uh, that, uh, that we've had on the show so far. He, I'm going to mute the jukebox. He is an absolute, uh, just just a superstar. I'm going to check in with his audio. Uh, uh, Dapper, are you there? Are you with us? I'm in. Hello, hello. What's up, All Gary? All right, here he is, here he is, here he is. I'm so excited. I'm so excited about this. I'm going to drop the lights, and I'm going to let him take it away. Please take it away and take us to new musical places, the Dapper Rapper. All right, guys, what's going on? It's amazing to be here, by the way, Gary. Thank you for having me. This has been so much fun to watch and kick it in the green room. I've been getting ready. And um, yo, so to everybody here who is seeing me for the first time, I am the Dapper Rapper. I'm a freestyle rapper here on Twitch. Everything is going to be improvised. So feel free to tune in and uh, participate in chat. I'm going to shout all of you guys out. I see a lot of my Dapper squad in here already. So they'll probably lead the charge. And uh, here we go. Yeah. Hey, I know that you come and see the shades, right? I gotta go and turn up in the tank, right? Yo, everybody going and they be rocking around with Dapper while I go and I've been flowing. Yo, I ain't like... All these other rappers, man, they know they acting. Devil gotta go in the flow and they know reacting. To everybody that been coming and they been chatting, yo, one time now for the people that just have it. Whoa, y'all just come and catch a vibe. Yo, I be going and I been chilling, getting lit tonight. Shout out to Gary and everybody rocking one for Paul. I been going and I been rocking with y'all. We going off, look. And man, I know your devil gotta love this. I wanna go and act, shout to Duncan. I might go and I straight get casted. Keep on going and I been rapping, they know the best to go in i'm a flow yeah i'm blessed everybody rocking with me they know y'all impressed shout the karmas and everybody rocking with me while i go in i flow they you know i say y'all i'm all in all right now you guys type words in the chat i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna freestyle the words that you guys actually type let's go yeah yo oh shoot man they know yeah we lit right i gotta go and get it popping y'all been like the greatest rapper that they heard on a loaf of bread i'm about to go and get the jam man i spread that uh man i gotta come and i'ma spit it yeah orange man i went and out of rip they got the turn that's coming growing and i'm about to go and get them yeah i'm stonking up and everybody go and see me in the kitchen yo gary rocking with me man i'm flowing yo it's scary raw when i'm coming and rapping they know i carry up the weight right up on my back man they know i'm killing it listen you know that with the avalanche i see traffic running right up through i keep on going and i've been flowing with you in the room Yo, if you wanna come and rock around with my dog Yo, when I go in, I'm ripping and listen, make I know we beating the mob Shout out to Scared, this my pup And everybody watching me go in, I'm rapping it on, ripping it up One time for all, shout out Very Handsome Billy, that's my bro They know I said we about to make some songs, look T-Pain, man, they know, yo, we was Going, watching them laughing, man, eager to go in I'ma make a little toast to my bros Watching me while I go in, I'm been flowing I need a feature, super califragilistic XB, allidocious, I'm the swagger pack And rhythm rapping, extra fucking dope as whoa I meant to go and dumb it down Make I know, yo, I love the way that I go in I'm rapping around, I say yeah, everybody in the chat now. Yo, thank you for the love. Nah, I never back down. I gotta go when I'm rapping. I'm about to go and snap freestyle. Probably until I go and black out. Yeah, yeah, everybody come and kick. And if you wouldn't, let me know how you feeling again. Yo, y'all know I just wanna go and I'ma get my switch real soon. So I go and I just turn up. Yes. Yeah, baby. Oh That's the one. Oh my god. Oh god. The rapper. This is the warm up, man. I need to get one under my belt. So don't judge me off the first one. <laughs> that was straight. Fire. Fire. Dapper, do you well, want to go again or do you want to join us on the couch for the uh, interview segment? It's totally up to you. Well, I'm, I'm going to do something special for you, Gary. I have a song that I haven't released, so I came oh to, to debut it with you guys here. Is this going to cool be an Animal Talking exclusive? Yeah, I think it'll be like Amazing. the first. Maybe we can make this like a thing. You know what I mean? I, Where I'm loving it. I, just, I, I had no idea this was happening, but I, what, a, what a wonderful surprise. Go for it. Take it away. Do what you got to do. Shout out to Boop Boop Beeper. What a lovely person in the chat. That's one of my faves over on the Dapper Squad. So this next song that I have, it's called Young Paper Chasers. Um, it's produced by a friend of mine that lives in Detroit. Uh, he flew down and we made it here in my uh, in my home studio. We broadcasted some of it. But um, this is the first time that I'm going to play it for people. So enjoy it. Let me know what you guys think. Thank you. 
Young paper chaser, go on hit it, stack a little dough. Yeah, stack a little dough. Young paper chasers, go on hit it, stack a little dough. And when you done, stack a little more. Young paper chasers, go on hit it, show them how you roll. Head crack, double back, now you gone. Young paper chaser, go ahead and flip another O. Stack your profit, then move up to the Q. Young paper chaser, go ahead and let them all know. You young, but getting money like you old. Young paper chaser, go boy, dream turning into hood realities. High life, real mixed in with some tragedies. Money, cars, clothes, all parts of the masterpiece. Pull up on your bitch, and I ain't taking her to Applebee's. Shit ain't fair, but it's still real. They say money's evil, but it's still a big deal. It don't buy happiness, but it can buy you big wheels. It don't buy talent, but it's close to how I really feel. That's why they fake it till they make it. All in search of how it seems to have the lifestyle of an artist or a baller from a team. Insert themselves into this world that is the world of all our dreams. Where all this love and ain't no problems, but that world is make believe. You gotta make it what you want. You gotta grind if you'll succeed. If not, you'll realize real quick it ain't as easy as it seems. You wanna walk inside these shoes, wanna step inside these jeans. And if you lack the spirit needed, you'll be busting at the seams. Hey, bro. Man, I know I just gotta go and get the money, man. I need a lot of paper. Man, I know I gotta get the wildin' Gotta get the paper. Man, I know you I just gotta go and get the money, man. I need a lot of paper. Man, I know I gotta get the wildin' Young paper chasers. And that's young paper chasers, ladies. Gold exclusive. Animal Crossing first. Yo, can I do one thing real quick? Shout out to my man, Billy, with the raid. Let's go. We got go. very handsome Billy in the chat. He's right here. Billy in the chat. That's my guy right there, man. Oh, my God. I, lo I love that all you Twitch uh, guys and musicians all support each other. It's, it's wonderful. I love that. Love it. I got to meet Raquel um, at uh, TwitchCon when I actually got to meet you as well, Gary. So, yeah. You actually cool. did a little uh, collab with Raquel on the stage, didn't you? We did. Impromptu. She pulled me on the stage, uh, which was amazing. So, that was great. Let's get you over here on the couch. Do a little, Let's do, uh, it, do a little chitty, chitty chatty. We're gonna get you yeah, over here. Chatty, How do you like your avatar, by the way? I think we did a good job with it. I think you guys did great, and um, you guys are gonna see in the after party. I did my best to kind of match as well as I could. You're not gonna do. You're not gonna do dapper. In honor of you, I'm gonna head over to the jukebox here, and I'm gonna turn off the KK uh, jazz. I'm gonna turn on KK cruising his hip hop album. Oh, okay. Because I feel like that is more uh, more your cup of tea. Let's get this. All on right. There I like go. it. Okay, we got it running. All right. Mood. Get the mood. Yeah, get some get some hip hop beats. Gary, are you eating? <laughs> I might be chewing a little something. RTX Audio is supposed to be filtering all that out. <laughs> That's not how that works. Little, little ASMR. Not while you're talking. Oh, okay. oh, I've done it now. That's I've done funny. it now. I've eaten it. Listen, Dapper, the Dapper Talk. Rapper. Um, yes, sir. How how I, I I don't even know what to ask you. I have so many quick because you and I have known each other on Twitch for a while. We're friends on Twitch. Yeah, you know, we're, we're gonna we're, chop we're, it up. I figure we're just kind of. Forth. always happy to see you to you i always like i love popping into your streams For sure. you have a really positive community you have a great vibe over there i was thrilled to meet you at twitchcon in san diego last year we hung out it's nice to meet you in the flesh I, I, I never really got to like sit down and like really kind of ask you these questions but you're on my talk show now so this is the perfect forum i guess the first question i want to ask you is like when did you first realize you had this this amazing talent is this something you've been doing from a young age yeah actually so that's a funny story i'll share it with you guys um this started in the sixth grade for me I was uh, <clears throat> I was in drama, believe it or not, don't make fun of me. So I was uh, in drama and I got challenged to a rap battle by a friend of mine and I had never done anything like that. So I was like a little nervous. So we went home and we like wrote what we were going to rap. And the next day we came to school in the sixth grade. You can imagine how like scary this was, right? So we all got together and like there's like 50 people all surrounding us before like the bell rings to go to class. And we both like recited what we wrote and essentially had like this this battle. And um, I had never done it. And apparently I, I, I did really well. I destroyed them and the crowd went crazy and they loved it. And I was hooked from that moment forward. I was like, wow, this is insane. I can't believe this. And then from that moment forward, I started like writing. I got into like, you know, poetry. And then I started writing some songs. And eventually in about the eighth grade, two years later, I started freestyling. And then from there, I never looked back. That became my passion. Who uh, who were your um, your your heroes? Uh, who who did you like to listen to when you were a kid? Who were some of the hip hop artists and rappers that you that you were influenced by? So my first two albums were DMX, "It Is Dark and Hell Is Hot," and 
Bone Thugs and Harmony, the collection volume one, which I think both have led to like uh, really influence my sound in a way because I've got like this, I've got this flowy, like sing songy cadence that I do, but I also have this like, you know, assertiveness that I put in there like DMX does. And then just like a lot of different artists from old school to new school. I think Ludacris influenced a lot of my flow. Um, newer artists like Russ um, with the production and the singing and the rapping. I like that a lot. Um, I also like a lot of like the new age stuff, you know, like I, I listen to it all, Gary, besides hip hop. I like a lot of different genres, but in, in the world of hip hop, it's divided now with so many sub genres and it's kind of, um, you, you know, you can't like them all apparently. Right. So it's like, if you're an old school hip hop guy, you beef with the new school hip hop guys. If you're new school, you don't like the old school. I like it all, man. You know, I feel like it all has its time and place. And it's it, what you do is a very, very specific skill set within rap right i mean it's 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 one it's one thing to rap like lyrics that you've written and and to you know basically sing along uh, a song that you you already know what the flow is you already know what the kind of the rhyme and the meter is but to do what right. you do to kind of do it extemporaneously like that just make kind of making it up as you go i mean that i mean we, we you know i i first discovered that when i saw the eminem movie eight mile like the whole idea of like rap battles i thought was incredible but like so right. it, it's a very specific subset of rap right what the, the that that kind of um uh, uh free freestyle that you do yeah, I would say that it is uh, a dying breed, maybe. Um, I'm trying to keep it alive. I'm trying to keep it current. A lot of people will post freestyle videos or like um, when these rappers go to radio stations, they'll post it as a freestyle when in reality, it's not that. These are pre-written bars. And uh, the world, the word freestyle gets thrown around very loosely. But what I'm doing is actually, you know, making up, making it up as I go. I guess you might even uh, go and call it an improv. But the best way I can describe it is freestyle rap is like, live streaming your thoughts there's no time for edit you know making a song is like a youtube video you know you you create the content you edit it you put it together you package it you release it to the world when you're live streaming you're on the fly there's no edit if you make a mistake it's in there you know it is what it is so freestyle rap is live streamed thoughts that's all it is sora sora Carell in the chat and if you've got if you've got questions for the dapper rapper please put them into the chat and i'll pass them along to him this is i mean this kind of sounds like an obvious question, but in some ways, it's kind of the only question. I don't even know how you begin to answer it. He just asks simply, how do you string words together so fast? Uh, definitely practice uh, repetition. You know, anything that I, a lot, someone asked me the other day is how much of what I do is a natural talent versus an acquired skill? And I thought that that was a really great question because um, I get asked certain questions about freestyle often. And that was the first time I ever saw that one. And I want to say that <clears throat> it's definitely an acquired skill. But there are factors that play into it that help you as far as like natural talent. So if you're naturally creative, um, you're going to be probably better suited, right? So like I have a creative knack that helps me in my freestyle, which I practice every day for hours on end. I go live four, five, six hours. I've been doing this for five or six years, but <clears throat> I've been rapping for long before then. So I think it's mostly acquired skill. Um, and then you can benefit greatly from certain natural talents that you may have. And are, are, you, are you at a point where you feel like you're still learning, improving, getting better? Or do you reach a point where you're like, I, you, you've kind of like, this is it. Like I've hit, I've hit like the, 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 the top of my ability. Do you feel like you can yeah. still keep getting better as you, as you continue to practice? Yeah, I definitely think that I'm a lifelong learner. Um, you know, you constantly learn new words. Another thing is, you know, freestyling on, um, as often as I do, you want to break word patterns, right? So it's like certain words kind of stick themselves together in your mind and you kind of want to break free from that. So you always have the ability to, you know, change how you flow, um, string words together in a different way, find new ways to express similar thoughts. So I think that you're always going to have the ability to get better. Of course, you plateau. Um, I mean, I'm a live streamer, too. So I think that's a different part of this. Um, the live stream grind is a whole nother thing in its own self. Uh, coupled with the freestyle grind, you know, it can definitely be taxing, but this is definitely what I do, man. I've been training for this my whole life and I love it. And, t and tell me specifically about being a musician on Twitch. You know, you have this amazing uh, platform in that you can, uh, like I said, take, you, you can do what no other musician can do on a different platform, which is to take those live comments from the chat and, and work them into your flows in real time how did you how did you discover twitch as a platform and what's what's it like being a musician on twitch do you feel like it's a good platform for you to to, to reach a reach an audience how, how's your whole twitch experience right. been as a musician yeah that's a great question so um i actually started my sh live streaming career elsewhere i was on a different platform previously for about five years and um <clears throat> that's how i discovered live streaming and then i kind of uh 
grew to the top of that platform if you would i was like kind of like one of the pillars and you know uh more known faces on there i kind of grew to my capacity there i hit the ceiling and it was time to graduate and that's kind of how i found twitch so i was aware of twitch i wasn't sure if it was the right home for my show because at that time everybody was uh really fixated on the impression that twitch was only for gaming which i think uh now finally people are getting hip to the fact that there's a lot more than gaming that happens here which also i love the gaming world um but because of that that's kind of what led me over here so I started live streaming on Twitch while I was still streaming on my previous platform. I grew my Twitch audience and um, just migrated them eventually. And I just became a full-time Twitch streamer. So I've been full-time streaming uh, for a little bit over five years. Um, and I've been a partner on Twitch for less than a year. So I'm yeah, pretty new. Yeah, you just got partnered recently, right? In July. So I'm, I'm creeping up on the year mark. So uh, July will be one year uh, Twitch partnership. Now, I'm a bit embarrassed here, Dapper. I know that I, I, early, long ago when we first booked you on the show, I said, send me a clip so that people can see like what you actually do, what you look like on your channel. You sent it to me. And of course, now I've gone and bloody lost it. Do you remember Do you, do you remember what you sent me and where you said, can I dig, can, I'm trying to dig it up right now so people can see the clip that you sent me. I, you, I'm, I'm terrified. It? I don't even know. I mean, you might want to pull up my Instagram. I have some Twitch clips oh, on, it's Instagram. on your Instagram. I'm looking at your clips right now. Let me see what I can pull up here. Um, let me you know, find I, one. I, I, yeah, find, find me find me a good clip. Send it to me as like a Twitch whisper or something because I really want people to kind of get like a native look at what your yeah. um what your channel is like. And, and while you're doing that, so like you're out of Miami, right? You're out of Miami, Florida. That's that's that's, that's where correct. you're based. Are you born yep, and raised born and there? Raised. Born and raised. Yeah, that's right. I'm Cuban Irish. I was born and raised in Miami, Florida. Uh, my first time seeing a mountain was two years ago. <laughs> so I'm I'm definitely a real Florida boy. Are you, um, is that a, what's, what's the, what's the, what's the music, the, the particular scene, like hip hop and rap is, I, 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 I sound like an idiot saying, because of course it is, but like Miami is a, it's going to hop better that kind of music, right? Miami is absolutely a cultural melting pot of everything and anything that you could possibly imagine. This is a hub for travel, for tourism. We've got everything you can really think of. And um, for that reason, the music is very diverse down here. We have a lot of Caribbean influence uh, being reggae, soca, dance hall, um, a lot of Latin music, salsa, merengue, and all of that kind of bleeds into the hip hop, uh, R&B. It just, it all kind of like borrows from one another. And um, we have a really awesome music scene down here. Music, arts, the whole nine yards. Uh, Miami is awesome for that. I would even separate us from the rest of Florida. I mean, I don't like to do that, but in reality, Miami is its own place. It's vastly different than our neighboring cities. I, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I am listening to your answers and I think they're fascinating, but then yet at the same time, I'm just so tickled by your little cartoon dapper rapper sitting on the couch here. It's just so adorable. <laughs> great. I, I got to give good. a shout out. Please, please, please give Leah a shout out in the chat. Leah, Leah puts up with a lot from me, but she also Leah, contributes an incredible amount to the show. She designs the avatars. She puts incredible effort into making these avatars look like the characters that they're um, emulating. And then she actually pilot, like right now that's Leah that's, that's piloting uh, Dapper's avatar. Dapper is just providing, I say just, it's obviously the most important part, but he's providing I mean, the voice and Leah's kind of doing the, the performance uh, aspect. To take it even a step further, uh, we may even go as far as crediting Leah with my appearance on the show to begin with, because, you know, she pointed me out. That's how you clicked if on my she stream. had not said, I'd who is that guy with the beard? We, no, I might none never of, be we, none here. of us might be here. Oh my none God. None of us might yeah, be here. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> we, did actually have, we did actually have a question in the chat earlier. You do have a terrific look there. You've got incredible hair. Uh, some people okay. have called you Rap Jesus because you have right. this look. Right. Um, yeah. I, you, you've got this incredible, uh, a, 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 not a man bun, but like a beard bun. You actually wear yeah. your beard in this incredible. Yeah. The beard is quite bun. majestic. Yeah. T t tell me about the hair. Tell me about the products. Tell me about the, the, this look that you've cultivated. All right. So that's kind of a cool story, too. So <clears throat> I was um, in the, the jobs that I worked pre music were I was a, I worked construction. I was a waiter and I was a cook. Those were kind of like, that's the variety of my work experience pre music. Um, so <clears throat> essentially I was working at this restaurant. Um, I had, you know, bounced around. I ended up at this very, very fancy restaurant. I won't say the name of it, but it was like insane prices, Gary. I'm talking about like, they had $15,000 bottles of wine in this restaurant, which is crazy. I can't even understand people do that. I, I once had a table that drank three of these bottles. I was like, insane 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 people but these people were real rough man and um 
It was tough working in this place. Um, they did not play games. It was really, really crazy. They were so rough, man. They, you know, one thing is to expect the best. Another thing is to like, you know, mistreat people and just think you're better than people. And it was so disheartening that the day that I quit my job, my, let me add some to this. So I had to shave my face clean shaved every day, which wasn't a big deal. You know, whatever I lived with it. I always had like a short groomed beard anyway. So it wasn't a big difference. So I would shave my face clean every day. If you had like a five o'clock shadow, they'd send you home. If you had a wrinkle in your apron, you'd have to go home. It was just crazy. So the day I got fed up, I quit my job in the middle of like a weekend rush. I just, I just knew that I was done. I took my apron off. I threw it on the ground. I walked out the back door and I told myself that I was going to do whatever it took to pursue my dreams and live life on my terms, making music how I wanted to do it. And that day I said, I was going to grow my beard until the day that I feel that I've made it. So that day I started growing my beard. And I also want to tell you guys that that day tomorrow will be six years. So my beard turns six at midnight. Oh, wow. You're, so you're, you're having a, a beard birthday. You just get some beard birthday nice. emotes in the yeah. chat for the Parts, for the right? dapper rapper. So That's incredible. Um, six years ago, I started this whole live streaming world, uh, you know, and I just decided that I was just going to do whatever it took to be my own boss and make music and just kind of live a little different, you know, break free from the wheel, get out of the system. And um, that's what I did. That's kind of how it started. That's how I started growing my beard. And that's how my look kind of transformed into what it, what it is. So I feel like I have reached some levels of success. I've been self-employed now for, you know, over four years. So um, I just bought a house, you know, it's awesome stuff. I did this all off of live streaming and music. So I do feel like I've accomplished incredible things. So the, but the beard stays for a little longer, man. There's a couple more accomplishments that I have on my list before it goes. Um, but the day that I, that I chopped the beard, all right, I just want you guys to congratulate me because it will mean that I have made it in my eyes. <laughs> what, what, so so you, you, you've, you've led me perfectly. I love it when, when guests make my job as a talk show host easy. What, what, at what point will you have considered to have made it? What are your ambitions? Do you want the, the, do you want the big deal with a record label? Like what, 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 when are you going to be happy in terms of your musical success? What, what's, what, what do you want? That, that's a tricky question, man. That's, that's tough to walk into, right? So I'm not sure exactly. I haven't exactly pinpointed what that defining moment will be, but I feel like when I accomplish it, I think that I'll know. Um, I've had a couple great moments, like being recognized by some of my favorite rappers all through Twitch. You know, who knows? Maybe that could lead to collaborations, but I would definitely like to tour. Um, that's on my list. I want to tour. Obviously, after this Corona situation normalizes, that's high, high on my list. Um, and there's a couple artists that I would love to work with, you know, that I'm getting close to being able to reach out and I'm, I'm tapping into those circles and getting a little, little, a little bit closer. So. I think that once I do that, maybe uh, collaborate with some of my idols and go on tour. I think then I think it might be time after that. So you and, and obviously your, your primary platform here is on Twitch and it's a unique platform for musicians. Uh, I mean, can, do, you, do you see yourself um, having a platform on Twitch for a while or do you see it as just like a stepping stone to something bigger? Like how, how, how do you view your relationship uh, with Twitch? So I came to Twitch uh, because to me, this was this was the big pond, right? I was um, I was doing big things where I was at um, and I felt like I, I reached that limit. And then when I looked over here, it was like, all right, you know, I was a big fish in the pond over there. And then I was like, let me jump over here because this this is a vast ocean. And um, when I made the switch, I realized, wow, this is huge, right? So Twitch is gigantic. This is enormous. Uh, you've got You've got all the big stars on here. And I got to say, man, a big part of it has to do with coronavirus. So although it's been, you know, devastating for most of the world and everything, it has brought so much attention to Twitch. And for the music scene in particular, during the coronavirus, um, we have been spotlighted and there are so many new eyes on us. I think that I think that this is it, man. This is this is a part of what I'll be doing forever. Even if I go ahead and I blow up and I take it all the way and I go on tour, you know, leisurely Twitch streams are going to be a part of my life probably forever. And where else can people find you? Obviously, twitch.tv slash Adapa Rapper. That's your native home. Do you have a Spotify right. or you're on Apple Music? Like where, where people that want to find you outside yeah. of Twitch, where, do, where go do they go? Check me out. You can check me out on Spotify. Um, look up the Dapper Rapper. I can actually drop my Spotify link in chat. Drop um, it right in there. Actually, you may not be able to. Um, okay, cool. uh, but if Maybe you, I'll if you, for it. I will, I, yeah, um, whisper it to me and I will get it or a mod will get it in the chat because only uh, only the uh, the super duper oh, VIPs good. are allowed Same. to uh, post links. 
Yeah, but, same uh, old Gremlin house. Whis- whis- whisper, whisper it to me and I will get it in the chat. In fact, there you go. TL Josh already went and did it. He found your Spotify. Look at uh, that. He's not, he's not kidding around. Let's yeah. see over here. Uh, let's Perfect. see real quick. There oh, it I is. Have one I have one there single there. There it is, there. the Dapper Rapper. Um, that song has been up for a little while. I am will I will be posting the song that I played for you guys on there next. So Young Paper Chasers will be up there. Um, I love that single, by, by the way. Followed by two more releases. And then I'm going into EP slash album mode. And I anticipate releasing my first official music project um, this year. I'm very yes. excited. That's very excited. Um, I'm kind of bummed that we're probably not going to get to head, head, uh, hang out at TwitchCon again this year. Because we're all still going to be stuck That's at great. home. It's such a good yeah, time we're last awesome. year. What a bummer. Yeah. Um, you know, hopefully it just gives them an extra year to prepare and make the next one just that much better, right? Yeah, and yeah. Well, and, and we'll, we'll make up for lost time the next uh, the next time we uh, we meet up in uh, in the real world. Dapper. Right. So uh, we're coming up towards the end of the show. Before you, um, uh, here's what I think. How we're going to close the show? I think we're gonna, I think we're gonna we'll, we'll get you back behind the turntable. We'll have you close That's out the show with some more of your amazing freestyle. And then if you want to fire up your stream. As yep. we're rolling our credits, uh, I will then I will then raid everyone into your chat, and we can do it after party uh, at your uh, at your Miami uh, rap uh, central. Oh baby, I'm we'll ready. Going. First oh, of all, man. though, first of all, um, Duncan got away with it. I forgot to ask him. Paul told a terrible joke. We do ask that people, uh, everyone who comes onto the channel, uh, onto our show, does tell a joke. I, I, now, first of all, Dapper, I know because I know you. I, I, I know you. I know you like to sail close to the wind. I got to ask you because I didn't pre-screen your joke. Is this joke? Is this? Is it family friendly? Is it going to be? Is it? Is this going to be a wholesome joke, or am I going to have to worry about cutting this out of the YouTube version? No, no. This will. This will fly. This. This should all be right. good. Okay, I'm ready. Good. I'm listening. Let's. Let's go. I'm right. wanna, I want to hear it. All right. Are you ready? What's the difference between a dirty bus stop? And a lobster with breast implants. Oh my god! All right, okay. I I don't know what's the difference. Like, I don't even need a punchline. Just the question itself is hilarious. What's the difference? I don't know. Let me see if I got this right. What's the difference between a dirty bus stop and a lobster with breast implants? I don't know. Yes. One is a crusty bus station, and the other is a busty crustacean. All right, I'm giving it to you. I'm giving it to you. I'm giving it to you. Why not? Why not? Oh Why man. Not? Oh my God, um, Adam! Guess what? I've got a joke this week, oh, uh, this episode. Excellent. I've got one. I yeah. don't usually tell jokes on the show because I, because you all beat up on me. You all pretend like they're not. You don't like my jokes. Um, but I am going to tell one. I'm going to. I'm getting the point because we always vote on the jokes here. We're going to do a new poll. I'm going to get this poll up right now as I as I prepare my joke for you. So Paul, so Paul told a joke. What was Paul's joke again? What What was the joke that Paul Shear told? I don't uh... remember. I actually don't remember. I... Oh my god! Argh, argh, oh god. Have... steering the ship or something. Oh, the ship that's <laughs> oh. driving me nuts. Yeah, 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 driving me the pirate joke. Pirate jokes are the best. Driving me nuts. That's right. That's right. Okay. So Paul had driving me nuts. Dapper had the busty crustacean and the crusty bus station. That's a good one. I do like it. Um, you, you by the way, you know when a setup is that specific that it's it's going to be a really tortured punchline. You've really gone out of your way to make that joke. <laughs> I do like it. Um, okay, here's mine. You ready to hear my joke? You ready to hear my joke? Okay. Kind of. Now, now a lot of Americans don't know geography very well, so they get confused about this all the time. I'm gonna I'm gonna clean it up. I'm gonna clear it up for you. What is the difference between Dubai and Abu Dhabi? I don't what know. What is the difference between Dubai and Abu, Abu Dhabi? Dhabi? Well, you it? see, in Dubai they don't like the Flintstones, but Abu <laughs> Dhabi do. <laughs> oh, <laughs> all right, all right. Leah, Leah tried to caution me that no one under the age of 30 would get that joke. <laughs> you got to be a Flintstones guy, man. Come on. Yeah, I mean, me. who, who, doesn't, who doesn't know the Flintstones? I mean, you're growing up with the vitamins no matter what age you are. That's it. Adam, would you like to jump in here or should we just go with the three of us before I open this poll? Uh, I had a joke, uh, but it was about dairy and I decided it was too cheesy. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, I don't know if I should put you in the poll for that or not. <laughs> <sighs> Wait, I'm, I'm going to hit you with another one, Gary. Yo, you, you want to go again? All right. Just real quick. You ready? Okay. All right. Why don't ants get sick? I don't know. Because they have antibodies. Oh, shit. <laughs> do, you, do you want to... Now, you only get to submit one. Do you want to go with that one or do you want to go with the first one? Oh, no, no, no. The busty crustacean is me all day. I don't know. I kind of like the antibodies. I think the antibodies one is better. But I mean, that's <laughs> oh, your, your choice. You're the yeah. you're a comedian. Chat, right. what do okay. You think? So Paul with driving me nuts. Dapper with the busty crustaceans and Gary with Ab Abu Dhabi do. Uh, the poll is up. 
the poll is up and uh, it's at the top of the chat. I invite you to vote uh, right now uh, between Paul Shear, professional comedian, uh, Dapper Rapper. Oh my God, don't don't tell me that I'm going to have to tell Paul that he's got no votes. Okay, there one. Okay, a few people have voted for him. Dapper is running away with it with the crusty oh, okay. bus station. I personally think I should. I'm telling you, Adam, there is a host tax that I pay every time I tell a joke. <laughs> if I was a guest telling these jokes, I'd be getting double these votes. It's just because it's me. And everyone wants to oh, beat up that, on the host. Is that how that's, it goes? No, that's exactly what it is. Hmm. That's exactly what it is. Yeah, it's uh, you know what's happening here. There appears to be a name missing from that list. Because that, that, that you, you didn't really want to submit that, did you? <laughs> did, did you really want to go in with that? Are you questioning my craft? <laughs> You know what? If I have, if I have, if that I have was to... another cheese joke, that's pretty good, man. I'm not mad at that. <laughs> all right. You know what? Here's okay. All right. Here's the here's, okay. Here's the thing. All right. You know what? You want to go again? We'll go again. We'll go again. All right. Okay. So, okay. Uh, Paul with driving me nuts. Dapper with the mm -hmm. busty crustacean. Gary with Abu Dhabi do. And Adam with what? What was your joke? What, what was it again? I've already forgotten it. The chat knows what it was. He had a joke about dairy, but it was too cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, chat. Don't okay. let me down, man. We killed it's it on up. the first. Okay, right. it's up. It's, it, the revised poll with Adam's <laughs> joke is now up. And watch what happens now. People will vote for Adam just to troll yeah. me. That is exactly oh so predictable. <laughs> so predictable. Oh my god. Oh, I, I, do, I do. I do. I do. I do like. I, I do like Sir Gent in chat. How dare he question your craft with a capital K? That's not bad. That's not bad. Yo, Dapper Squad, we need this. <laughs> Come on, Dapper Squad. I know Looks you like, all like dairy. It's Come very on, close. It's Dapper dairy, and Adam dairy, are dairy. looking kind of neck and neck right now. Look at this. Look at oh, this. Oh no! Don't forget about the antibodies. I'm being <laughs> defeated. I like I like the fact that at least a few people are still there voting for poor Paul Shit, who's long gone. <laughs> Some people are still trying to give him. He's the professional comedian. Oh, He's God. made more money being funny than we ever will. For sure. All right, who's happening? And it's looking like Dapper's pulling it out. Ooh, it's getting close. It's close, yeah, it but I think close, I think Dapper's like got Dapper it. Dapper will take it. I think he's got it. He's got it. 70 votes. Good work, Dapper. Yeah, there it is. 46% of the vote. Congratulations. Congratulations to Dapper Rapper. All right, so here's the thing. We're going to we're going to close out the show. Oh, before we do that, before we do that, I just want to give you a little note. We always uh, announce uh, the next show's guest um, at the at the end of the show. This show is no different. I'm happy to announce uh, we've got some great guests uh, coming up on Friday. On Friday morning at 9 a.m. Pacific, we will be joined by another. We had a great a, a comedy superstar on the show today uh, with, with with Paul Shear. Um, and he mentioned working on Veep. We have got a comedy legend uh, coming up on the show on uh, on on Friday. Uh, the amazing David Mandel, uh, from, who's worked on Seinfeld and Kirby Enthusiasm and Veep and all these amazing shows. Uh, will be on a uh, multiple, multiple, multiple Emmy winning comedy writer and comedy showrunner will be on the show. He's going to give us some comedy lessons and the wonderful, delightful, talented ace reporter from gamesindustry.biz, Rebecca Valentine, will also be here on uh, Monday uh, morning. Very, very excited about that show. And then after that show, we're going to take a little break because let me tell you, people, it's for me, it's either that or a breakdown. I got to take a break. This show has been killing me, killing me getting this show going. Yes, Friday morning. That's what I said like six times. Yes, Friday morning. There it is again. 9 a.m. Pacific time. The show this will be great. on. You've now, next week, next week, I'm going to be taking a break. The show, I canceled all the shows. I called the guests. I said, I'm so sorry, but like, I'm going to have a mental breakdown if I try to do another week of shows. Uh, or I'm going to have, like, I'm going to get kicked out of the house or like something bad is going to happen because like something's got to give. No shows next week. Unless something changes, no shows next week. We're going to take a little hiatus and then we'll be, we'll be back the following week, first week in June with a new schedule. We're planning on doing one big show a week rather than try to doing like three shows a week and spreading out. Uh, we'll be able to put more time and effort into each show. We're going to, the shows are going to get better and better because we're going to, we're going to spend more time on each show. Danny's Diary. I got, I got to show that again. Can't wait for Danny's Diary. Danny's Diary is coming up in June. 
uh, answer in the chat. Yes, I will return to KFGD. I haven't been on Winner Wednesdays, kind of funny games daily for the last two weeks because I've been so, so busy trying to keep this show going. Uh, I will be back on KFGD next Wednesday. Normal service will be resumed because we're not doing animal talking next week. We will be back first week in June. Uh, and let me just say, I, I, I guess the, I, I could say this on Friday show, but I'm just going to say it now because it's on my mind. I want to thank everybody, everybody sincerely who has been a part of this ridiculous incredible journey that we've been on for the last three weeks ago we started goofing around in our basement kind of playing at talk show uh i made a talk show set in my basement i said to my friend naomi do you want to come over put on a dress i'll put on a suit we'll like we'll play talk show and less than a month later here we are with a-list celebrity guests live music stand-up comedy um i think there's a piece in tomorrow's variety about this show like it's just ridiculous ridiculous things are happening and i promise you i promise you this is only the beginning when you see uh, some of the guests that we have coming up in June, boy, oh boy, like it, it's, it really is. I still don't believe that some of the people that are coming on the show are coming on. AOC is still uh, currently planned for July. I got a lot of things to work out with her people, but we're working them out. July is what we, is what is the date that they're giving me. Um, and we are fully, fully uh, prepared to take this show to the next level in every way possible. We're going to be, we're going to be doing some charity stuff uh, with IGN. There's going to be a special episode of Animal Talking early in june as part of ign's big charity effort very very excited to be a part of that and help raise money uh for good causes uh but that's all in the future for right now again i just want to sincerely sincerely from the bottom of my heart want to thank everybody it sounds like this is like the last episode or not it's not it's not but i just feel like saying this right now <laughs> to, to especially more than anyone in the world i mean just in general but right, right now in relation to this show to my lovely wife, Leah, who puts up with so much from me. She's got the patience of a saint. She's really had to tolerate a lot of crap from me in the last few weeks as I've, as I've been obsessed, uh, obsessively working on, on making this show. Um, uh, she doesn't just put up with me. She helps me make the show. She does so much behind the scenes. Executive producer, um, avatar creator, avatar designer, puppeteer. She, gets, she sources our wardrobe items along with Kate. She sources our prop department. She does so much behind the scenes. Literally, literally could not do that behind without her. Fill, fill up the uh, fill up the, the 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 chat with appreciative emotes for Leah. She really is my my better half in every every way. Um, I know I give him a lot of shit, and frankly, a lot of it is deserved. Uh, but Adam Nickerson, uh, what one what, what an incredible guy. He he has taken this is a hobby. Like no one no one's pay, no one's getting paid any anything. Like we're all just doing this as, as volunteers and Adam has been an, just an incredible, uh, incredible volunteer uh, here. Not only appearing as my band leader and sidekick on the show, he's the butt of my jokes. He puts up, puts up with a lot of crap from me on the air, uh, but he also, he puts together all the YouTube videos. He edits all the YouTube highlights. He does the thumbnails. He troubleshoots a lot of the technical back end. He spent hours with me in Discord, figuring out the technical issues that we need to figure out to make the show work. He's always hitting me up like, oh Gary, here's something else that I've done to contribute to the show. Um, couldn't do it without him either. Uh, Kate Stark, uh, a good friend of mine, a streamer that I've admired uh, for a long time now. Really, really happy to have her be a part of the show. She's helping. She's helped with the technical stuff. She helps wrangles out, wrangle our guests. She's helped with wardrobe. She helps dress me on the show. She does all this amazing stuff. Couldn't do it without her either. And I certainly couldn't do it without all of our wonderful moderators from the Legion of Gary, uh, Miss Envy, T.L. Josh, Dr. Jones. Uh, there are so, I, I, I apologize if I'm going to mess some of your names, but all of you, all of you are super, super crucial to the show. That's why we have at the end of the credits all our moderators. We thank you, thank you, thank you. We absolutely could not do this uh, without you. Uh, you're the best moderators in the business, uh, and I love you all. I'm sure I've, I'm sure I've forgotten to thank someone um but honestly seriously I, I, you you know who you are uh i love you all and i hope we get to continue to make this show together for a long time dapper are you ready to are you ready to uh, play play us out here i'm ready man that was beautiful by the way leah also thank you for making me look so great tonight i ordered <laughs> my switch by the way i ordered it I got oh you one. got a switch what do you got what do you get yeah. what did you get <clears throat> i got the whole setup the, sh the full shebang wait did you get the light or like the the full the full no. on one yeah, the full on. How'd you get that? You can't get them anywhere. That's impossible. Yeah, I did. I found one on OfferUp and I uh, I got it. So I'm going to get it shipping. Hopefully I didn't get scammed. Oh, man. <laughs> I, 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 are you going to get Animal Crossing? Will you be bringing your own character yeah. back on the show at 100%. some point? This, this really opened my eyes and uh, made me realize what I was missing out on. So call it some FOMO. Call it 
a little bit of opportunity, but I I ordered it. <laughs> so, so, some, someone else whose name just popped up in the chat that I forgot I forgot to, uh, to to thank. Of course, DJ Cupcakes. Thank you so much, DJ Cupcakes. I, I, just just dropping absolute bangers on the show on a regular basis. Um, Dapper, we've got to get you back here for a, for a collaboration with DJ Cupcakes, my seven year old daughter, spinning the platters that matter. She's incredible. I think I think that is a. That is a collaboration that I want to see in the near future. Let's Here's what I'm going to do, Dad. I'm going to ask you. I'm going to ask you to do one more set, and then what's yep. going to happen is I'm going to roll the. After you're done, I'm going to roll the show credits. While I'm rolling the credits, fire up uh, your stream, up. get your stream up and running, and then we'll, and then we'll send over everyone over to your place. How does that sound? Sounds so good. Thank you All again, right. Gary. I just want to say thank you and to everybody else in here. Thank you guys for the opportunity, Kate. You do such a great job in the green room behind the scenes, doing an amazing job. I followed your stream. Can't wait to check you out too. All right, Dapper, take us out. I, again, when your set is over, I'm going to play the credits, fire up your stream, and we'll uh, everyone back to yours. Gotcha, brother. Let's roll. Why not, right? Just a classic, the rollout. Let's go. Yo. Yeah. Dapper squad. Uh. Yeah, animals, they talk. Look, once I never cake, uh, shout out now to Gary. Yo, Leah, she did great. Make a know I say it's scary. How much you're my avatar coming and looking just like me. Gotta go when I get this shirt. Man, I'm gonna go buy the tea. Yes, I'm looking just like my avi. avi. Make I know your dad wanna go win rap and make you happy. Hoping that your everybody out and had a good time. I just like to go and vibe it and open show you'll get you high off of life. Make I see your how I rhyme every night. Make I watch how I go when I rip this shit in and over. So precise, I flow, I balance out my lows. All my people rocking with me, make I know I like the stove. Look, I'm about to go and I'ma fire up that after party. Man, I know what's good, Joe. Everybody like to shake their bodies, tapping on their toes. They moving up in their chairs. They watching the way that I go and I'm rapping and in the dairy years. yeah they know how i flow make i know your wish is ill y'all can see how i go when i rap the way i pay my bills look yeah you know it's oh so effective they rocking around with that while i go and rap they know my questions i answer i read and chat while i go and rap shatter the danaba make i know i say yo welcome back up to the place where i go snap man i need to get that plaque platinum pack action pack see i know i got your back uh yeah, yo, if you like it, let me know. I'm looking up at the chat. You know, I say it's almost time to go. One for boot, coming and dropping up that five piece chicken nugget. Yo, thank you for the love. And man, I'm hoping that y'all love it. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. My goodness. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. What a talent. What a talent. Guys, what thank you talent. Talent. again. I'm going to go ahead and fire up that after party for you guys. Go fire up your stream right now. We're going to roll credits. All right. We're going to roll see credits. And uh, we'll see you on the other side. Guys. Nobody go anywhere. From everyone yeah. here at Animal Talking, thank you so much. We'll see you again Friday morning. But for now, I'm your host, Gary Witter. See you next time.